It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Andy and Renee are here. We've got lots to talk about. You can guess which of us got invitations to the Apple event and which didn't. And we'll talk about what to expect. Apple's big events coming up, and we've got lots to say next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 574, recorded Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. Put the rodent down. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by LegalZoom. Grow your business and let LegalZoom help out with the legal stuff. For special savings, visit LegalZoom.com and enter MBW in the referral box at checkout. And by Texture. Access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere, using your smartphone or tablet. Try it free for 14 days at Texture.com slash twit. And by Dollar Shave Club. For a great shave at a great price, join Dollar Shave Club. New members get a starter set, which includes the executive razor and three trial-sized versions of their most popular products for only five bucks with free shipping. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash MacBreak. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Apple. And there's big news afoot. Hey, Richie is here from imore.com. Ready, early O ship. <laughs> Geeks assemble. Uh, also with us from the Chicago Sun Times, Andy in Notco. Hello. Good to see you. And uh, the three of us, of the three of us, <laughs> only one has clean glasses. No, only one. <laughs> only one. Put your glasses back on, Clark Kent. Only one. Is going to the be at uh, in uh, Cupertino on uh, you? Uh, yeah, you you showed you show you're picking it. I'm taking one on, for the team, on Leo. Tuesday, a week from now, you're I'm the guy one for the team. who has to go in and take point at the Steve Jobs Theater, 10 a.m. Pacific, September 12th, one week from today. Yes, sir. Are you excited? I never, I can never get excited about these things. It's that weird feeling where there's just so much to do that I'll be in pure stress mode until the event. It's like after the event has happened. I'll be retroactively excited, but it's just, it's like work, 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 work. Um, so it's, it's a terrible answer. And Georgia yells at me for giving that answer. But for me, it's just like, ah, oh, so many things to do, but yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Cause you're going to, what do you, so what will you, what will your workload look like? So we have to get a ton of stuff for like, we have to do all these previews for what's going to happen. We're already doing all the how to's for iOS 11 and all the other operating systems. We want to go in there with some semblance of a plan. Like if Apple releases A, B, C, D, what are we going to do? What video do we need? What articles we need to cover? How, like, what are the pre-orders going to look like? The orders, how do we help people choose the right one? And luckily Serenity uh, and Lori uh, Gill are managing most of that this year. So who's, uh, who's going in with you? Serenity. Serenity and myself are going to be in there. Okay. Yes. But, but I mean, it is as you, as you, gave us a hint it's a massive undertaking for a yeah, we'll have publication like i that, that just day. wants to yeah. do wall-to-wall -wall coverage of all the announcements yeah i mean I, I i i sort of john and jim just kind of walk in there with their either their iphone or their notepad and watch and scribble down a few notes and i'm always so jealous yeah that will be one day yeah. i can get yeah there. life is easy for the boss uh, well, Andy and i will be here actually uh, i will be here with renee i'm sorry with uh, megan maroney and uh, Alex Lindsay, he, the three of us will cover the event, 10 a.m. Pacific, as I mentioned. That's 1 p.m. Eastern, 1700 UTC a week from today. Backbreak Weekly will be delayed by however much the event uh, delays us. And then Andy and I and Alex will do Backbreak Weekly. And maybe, Renee, if we can figure it out. I You're expecting, though, a demo room after the keynote. Yeah, so usually it's like a two-hour keynote. And then it's usually – the demo theoretically doesn't take long. But when you have that many people crowding around those few tables, it can take two hours just to get in and see everything. Wow. So you'll be busy, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll get you – we'll get you – the following week, we'll get your Absolutely. Uh, impressions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one reason, of course, it's good to go is the demo room because th that's the that's the earliest exam you know chance you'll have to probably touch the the three new iPhones, the seven S, seven S plus. Are we saying iPhone eight now? Everybody seems to be saying iPhone eight, which I don't think is going to be the name. 
I mean, like, again, like there is no nothing precious about this. At some point, somebody, I don't know, maybe it's Jaws or Phil or someone walks in and types a few things out and then everything goes out. But they can name it and they can name it a uh, iPhone Rudolph if they want to. There's no as we've seen with the new iPad, there's 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 nothing stopping them from doing whatever they Apparently want. Apparently, my pick of the iPad Pro has been debunked, but I am still holding out iPhone Pro, iPhone X, iPhone 10, iPhone Edition iPhone supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> yeah, they, should, they, should the the, they, they should just cut to the quick and call it the iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have yeah, one. No, yeah, you yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rumor is now $1,000 for the base model, which will be 64 gigs, Renee? I think so. I mean, at a certain point, it becomes more expensive to keep smaller RAM configurations, right. uh, smaller uh, memory configurations. But 64, around. then 256, then 512. That's what I saw. I don't, I mean, again, we should say the only thing that's not speculation is that Apple will announce something a week from Tuesday at Steve Jobs Theater. Yes, and most likely a phone because they've done that for so many years. Most likely, but not necessarily. Could be a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to think about how they can price this thing anyway, because if you're if you're already saying that this is going to be a if it's true that's going to be no less than a thousand bucks, can Apple get away with being such a stinking cheapskate? To say that no, we're not going to give you 128 gigs. We're going to give you 64, which is kind of a, which is fine, but not an impressive amount of memory. It's, I mean, I hope they, they should at least in, include a charger. Let's say if they don't include a charger, then that's a problem. Yeah, they'll include but a I charger. <laughs> I know, I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking, but it's 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 the different. It's sort of like how there was a disconnect when Apple was trying to sell a twelve thousand dollars solid gold watch with a plastic band. Yeah. That was like, oh, yeah. for God's really? sakes, you, really? can you can afford leather. I've yeah. got a $250 watch that has a beautiful leather yeah. band. Yeah. Um, all right. I don't know if it, I, I think it, we need not go through the laundry list of things. I am curious, though, Renee, in your, in your battle plans. Yes. What are the long shots that you're planning for? So like this time unlikely around, I things, you know? I don't think there are too many unlikely things. So, for example, if it was an iPad event, we'd plan for like an iP Apple Pencil 2 maybe showing up. Uh, some people have asked about AirPods 2, but I think AirPods 1 are still – if they if they could somehow make them easier to produce, uh, I could see a revision on them. But I don't think there's any next generation technology for that. And I think they're going to stay away from Macs because traditionally they focus on iOS for the September event. So I think you know there may be a slide from iMac Pro, but I don't think we'll see Mac Mini or the modular Mac Pro or anything like that. I think they're going to really want to stay on story. So I think the the only things, the, the, the hardest things to predict are the things that are completely internal projects like Research Kit and Care Kit, which are phenomenal. They're not very mainstream, like they're not very mainstream exciting. Uh, people only see them when they're actually going to a hospital or going to a university center, but they really are fundamentally great technologies. And there could be some next version of that uh, that nobody is predicting. Yeah. Also, if the rumors about the iPhone Infinity are true, there's going to be a lot of <laughs> stuff that they're really going to have a lot of bullet points. They're really going to have to cover in detail. They're going to have to put together a demo so that anybody who's watching the stream and all the journalists and all the analysts who aren't in Cupertino will when they have to write their pieces that day will understand, OK, it doesn't have fingerprint recognition, but that's OK. It doesn't have a home button, but that's OK. Uh, and they're really going to have to nail all those points. So I'd be very, very surprised if they, if they, if they had anything that was not iOS. Uh, maybe, maybe a nod towards. Oh, and by the way, here's an up one slide update. The iMac is still on board. We're still get, we're still heading for that. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't talk about HomePod. But it really is going to be an iPhone Infinity event. Pictures are are uh, uh, coming up of uh, the Steve Jobs Theater. This is from. Um it's kind of interesting. A Spanish language Mac magazine uh, had these pictures apparently discovered in Google Maps. Somebody's been uploading them to Google Maps. <laughs> uh, That's so, hilarious. So we're getting images. Uh, and Neil Seibart tweeted, uh, based on the drawings, uh, that there is a demo area, right? And if it's the top floor, yeah, you'll have to walk through it. But maybe it'll be all covered in black when you go in. Oh, so or they'll be the, assembling the products when we're downstairs. You think the demo yeah. area will be in the lobby, the upstairs lobby? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It, so, it is. A, it is a gallery space. That, so that so this is the only part you see above ground. That's the round. 
world's largest carbon fiber roof and this is glass all around so i mean there's and there's no hiding what's inside i mean if somebody sends a drone over they're going to see so yeah cover it with actually that'd be exciting wouldn't it for the press arriving they'll go there they'll get they'll get their badges here they'll have their you know traditional crawler and a cup of coffee and then descend the escalators uh down and send the quarterbacks in on the but blitz. See, on the notice this. Back. Notice this here. Let me see if I can get this any bigger. This says exhibit space right here, underneath. Oh, yeah, right? Underneath. It so, looks like GI Joe's secret headquarters. It does. Temporary like, space like, storage. Yeah. You'll walk. Like, you, you, this is really cool. You're going to walk in. The auditorium doors are here. This is the this is the uh, the stage area. Is just this slice here. This look at how much backstage and loading dock area there is. Mm -hmm. The loading dock must have a big elevator. Because it's underground. Everything's underground except for the lobby. Uh, so the loading dock has an elevator, obviously. The backstage is as big as the theater. The backstage is massive. And, uh, of course, because that's where the executives are. That's where they're staging everything. Do they have a secret entrance in the back that goes right from there? It doesn't. And the, I don't know where Neil got these, by the way. Do you know? I, oh. I don't know where he got these drawings. Maybe it's the city plans? Oh, yeah, they would have to, wouldn't they, for permitting? And then, uh, let's see, so th this is the theater here. They've got um, stadium seating in the back. This this says, here it says mech area underneath, so. Oh, where they keep the mecha? <laughs> the, me the mech. The, well, if, if you don't like it, the mech are under here. Just remember. Ed 209, right? It didn't go Ed 209 okay. bad. This is kind of, I mean, this is really evil genius material here. This is the underground layer. Well, that was the big thing. It's like, are they going to get us all in there and then just flood it? Say we're tired of you people <laughs> and then just flood the whole thing. Andy, I think you and I lucked out on this one. <laughs> here's a uh, here's a cross section uh, from an aerial cross section. It gives you <coughs> a better idea. This is the stage area. All of this is backstage. Yeah, but, re but realize that this, they are building a theater, theater. It's not. It's not a, a place they built specifically to give product demos. In, oh, although again, well, what else uh, would they have here? Plays. Well, remember Come there's. Operas? They well, they could remember that this is this isn't something that again this isn't rental space. They're not being going to be there for five years. They're going to be there for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, and the what they're putting this is the one space you can get to without having to pass through Apple security. Uh, and there are a lot of companies uh, in the area, actually everywhere, where they do have they did need a, a big presentation space, but they can also do things like rent it out for functions, or if there's a function that they're doing where they just uh, they want to host like an academy screening or there there is just some sort of a speaker that they really like and they really really endorse uh they can have it in this is this is the ultimate case of renovating your building and thinking that all i want to do with the kitchen is getting new appliances but then you're thinking well look i'm not going to be able to renovate the house for another 10 or 20 years this is probably the last time i'm going to do this maybe i should pay the extra $15,000 to have a solarium attached to the kitchen and then a conversation area attached to that. I, I've, when I see things like that in the backstage area, I'm thinking that this looks typical for a real theater where if you want to do live presentations, you need to have a, a wide backstage that can handle pretty much anything. Uh, and as I've been saying for the past year or two, since we've been talking about this new thing, that this is a, this is also a theater that was designed specifically to get, to, to host this sort of event particularly well. So I've absolutely no doubt that there is, it was designed with the idea that there is a demo area that can be not just blocked off, but pretty much invisible to people who are coming in at the start of the event, or uh, if they want to do something uh, in the, uh, in the atrium area, uh, a easy ability to quickly do a load in in that area f over the course of an hour. So it's 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 like when you yeah it, 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 there's this is this is a tuxedo that was built for a magician. There are going to be all kinds of hidden pouches and double linings that you don't wouldn't be in anything else, but are exactly for the sort of act that Apple wants to pull off. It's it, it, it's going to be it's going to be fun. If if I were attending, I would be just as interested to document this thing looks like it's a wall but it's probably not a wall and oh there's i just saw somebody who was standing by this area and there wasn't a door there and now I, they're not there anymore this must be the place where people can quickly quickly slip out take a phone call and then come back in again That's here's like the that. uh so uh, this is a great tweet thread, by the way. Neil Seibert of From Above Avalon has a lot of information here. Meeting rooms. Meeting room, meeting room, meeting room, meeting room. Meeting room. Meeting room. Yeah. 
Uh, this is this says exhibit space, but when you look at the cross the uh, cross section, you see it says exhibit space down here. So I'm thinking the escalators come down, and there's a large exhibit space that is not visible to the public uh, here. He also says some other things. Quotes the San Jose Mercury News in an interview in the San Jose Mercury News that the theater costs fourteen thousand dollars a seat, according uh, to uh, somebody Borden. That the, uh, the there's also a thousand seats. It says clearly on the plans here, compared to sixteen hundred at Bill Graham for iPhone events, but much bigger than Herba, Herba Buena Center, seven hundred sixty, and uh, Apple Town Hall, three hundred. And that's the cool thing too is like they used Apple Town Hall for a lot of things. It wasn't just for press meetings; it was for everyday company meetings. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure this I think is they a did company. Some of Apple theater. University was yeah. there, and they did a lot yeah. of meetups. And some of the stuff they used to do in the center court of Infinite Loop, uh, like when they had bigger meetings, and they could at least stage uh, quasi bigger meetings, like when they have disclosure meetings or they have meetings to show off new app, like things internally, projects that are done internally. Uh, and the really cool thing about all this too is that. The, the, previously, to Andy's point, they would spend like a million dollars to make a platform that rose up and turned around to show off the new iPhone and then have to throw it away. Or they would spend um, you know millions of dollars to bring air conditioning into Bill Graham and then have to you know basically scuttle all that money. Where here they can purpose right. build all of those displays and all of those those you mechanics bet. exactly what they want it and then keep them. It'll save them money, I'm sure. I mean, this is what Apple's always wanted to do, I'm sure. Well, I think less than save the money, it gives them control and perpetual control, control right over now. the environment. Yeah. And you don't have to announce uh, what when your events are because you've got the theater booked privately. Yes. It, uh, it, it, removes, it removes the whole list of You've got to bump Eddie Q, but that's it. <laughs> according to the EIR, this is Jack March tweeting, the environmental impact report says only 350 media will be invited to special events at the auditorium. And the reason that number probably is part of the EIR is for parking and transportation. But that would explain why that the, these 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 tickets are in just as short supply as they would be as if if you were having it at town hall. I mean, that's not a lot of people. It means that there will be 650 Apple employees. And well, it, town and, hall was 300, oh, but it, but there was 1500. Uh, sorry, 150 media typically. So it's yeah. typically half. I think, okay. Capacity. I would guess, frankly, that you would want a lot of employees in there. If you're streaming this live now, you're going to presume most of the press, like me and Andy, will be watching the stream. And, and our friends at home, and that uh, really what you want is a loud and appreciative audience. When I went yeah, to... Yeah, because we're too busy typing. We're too busy typing. You're, you're to not applaud. applauding. When I went no. to see uh, uh, David Letterman, I remember going and getting in line to see David Letterman, and you line up, as you know, Andy, because you've done this ahead of time, uh, the, the, the pages are going around, uh, or the audience coordinators are going around, kind of finding the fun, happy, excited people and if they see media, they recognize me, which is amazing. And they said, oh, yeah, hi. We're and they put you in the back balcony because what they want in the front rows is the, is the people who are so excited to see Dave and cheering. And it would be the same here. This is... This is a media event. This makes sense. Well, it's, well right. it, yeah, I mean, it is. This isn't this isn't like a town hall meeting where it's a public event and people and they're required to. It's a show. Host a public. Ex exactly. There's a there's a point to what they're doing here, and I think one of the reasons, one of the many factors that I think factors into it is, uh, people who uh, people who can take best advantage of the demo area, people who are going to come with that. The, the the bane of my modern existence the people who have like that little that skeleton rig with the phone and the 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 blimped microphone and the and the lights they're live on facebook and they're <laughs> yeah and they're you know who who are, who are at the event where I'm, I'm trying to like get as much data as possible where <laughs> where us again every, everyone is there to do their job but it's like where i have to i have to sort of work my way around 18 people going Hi, uh, this is Tom of Tom's Tom's Wicked, and I've got an exclusive of the new iPhone 8. Uh, as you can see, it's like you, you, everyone has to do some live video if they don't have some time later on privately to to get to get hardware. They've got to collect stuff, and this is the sort of stuff that is of use to Apple, of use to Samsung, of use to Motorola, whatever company is running this event, to get as much play as possible on the same day when they can coordinate and take full advantage of this sort of stuff. So again, there, there are a hundred different variables to who gets invited, who doesn't. Uh, but you can certainly see where, again, this is a, this is a, an event with a goal in mind and some people figure into that goal. Some people don't figure into that goal and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Here again, from the pictures, a uh, uh, Mac magazine extracted from uh, Google maps is a picture of the stage. And of course the extensive backstage area. And you can see why that's, uh, so important. 
and then the uh, the fourteen thousand dollar piece seats. So Renee, I hope you will be careful not to put gum underneath They're there. The Japanese toilets of stadium seats. No bad <laughs> seats in this uh, in this uh, auditorium. That really really uh, is going to be a great place to see yeah. uh, Apple's new stuff. So it's next week. We will. I'm sure your plans include. You are fully expecting. Uh, besides new iPhones, the uh, at least a demo or some discussion of the Home Hub. Will there be the Siri news? functionality? Si yeah, I, well, I think we've never seen the Siri functionality. Only the Apple, t only the Apple Music functionality. So the, I expect to see a demo of all the like yeah. the, the voice commands and what it can actually do with all those. Speaking and hopefully, it's got technology that like they they the rumor at WWDC that people who had tried it said that you could be in a room. For example, you and I could be standing shoulder to shoulder in a room that was so loud we couldn't really hear each other, and at a normal voice you could. Uh, tell Siri to change the, the track and it would identify your voice and change the track for you. And I want to see that sort of technology. That's, that's cool. That would be really cool. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of Siri, it looks like according to the Apple executive uh, listing on their webpage, that Eddie Q is no longer in charge of Siri. Eddie uh, has uh, plenty of other things to do, but Craig Federighi, who's their software guy, will be running the Siri division and that was a while ago. It's funny. They make one, a oh, one-word change on Apple.com, results in yeah. 500 words on the Wall Street Journal, most of which are complete filler. So that happened a while ago. Yeah. It was oh, way yeah. before WWDC, at least. Oh. Crikey. I thought that was like, a, like breaking news. See, I got to keep up with it with Renee. Uh, Apple.com is usually the last place to go for breaking. <laughs> for breaking. Yeah, yeah. Except for the press right. section. Yeah. Uh, but so Craig will presumably come out and, and show us Siri on the home I keep saying hub, home pod. Yeah, he did the he did all the demos for Siri at WBDC, oh, okay. and then he was the one on John's show who was explaining about you know how they were doing the Siri technology on on the talk show live. You know, I'll be WBDC. watching that one with real interest as somebody who's spent so much money on Sonos speakers. Sonos is having an event October fourth, and we're pretty sure because of FCC filings, they'll be announcing a new speaker with uh, Amazon uh, Skeleton uh, built in, Amazon Echo built in. Uh, but uh, to me, that's that's a problematic because I have a I have all the old speakers. I don't. Know if, yes, they better have same. a good trade in policy or maybe some little plug in that well, adds that capability. It doesn't it doesn't have to be anything. Remember, Sonos are all connected speakers. So if you have one device with a microphone uh, that can access a skeleton, then that can basically route or route or say whatever you want to whatever speaker. And this is I I, get, I I can't agree with the Sonos is in trouble sort of dialogue that sometimes happens because at this point there's so much uh there's so much involvement with Google and with Amazon uh, to put those voice assistants on as many platforms as possible that I really do think that any speaker company that wants to have a speaker with uh, an advanced assistant can have one just by making the right deal. And I think that both those companies would be super eager to make that deal. The question is uh, Apple's ability to create something that elevates a speaker like that from being 90% there, 95% there to being like uh, like uh, like Renee said, I don't know where he where he got that, but if that is true, it's the ability that I don't have to walk into the next room to give the command. I don't have to turn. I don't have to mute something to give a command. No matter what I do, no matter what tone of voice I use, uh, no matter where I am in the room, even if I'm chewing gum at the time, I can give a command and that will be responded to. That's the sort of thing that if you're developing the hardware and if you're aggressively a about, hey, look at what great hardware we have. Apple can do and other companies can't. But Sonos can have a, an active speaker if they want. They can just, again, one lunch, and they can have that done before the appetizers arrive. Well, and they then, can have both SL and Cortana on the same speaker now. Well, okay. then, yes, they could do that. And, in fact, we're not sure that they're only going to do Echo. We know they'll do Echo because that was what was mentioned in yeah. the new terms of service. Uh, but they said, for example, Amazon Web Services or Amazon Voice Services. So it could be other could be others. That would be nice, right? Having and Amazon has already announced that they're going to put Cortana in Echo, and Echo is going to be in yeah. Cortana. <laughs> you know, honestly, Leo, if the assistants would just talk to each other, and I could relax and not have to worry about it, that'd be a plus for me. Me too. I just want one. Just handle it. That knows Cortana. all the others. You know, is friends with all the others and can ask the right person for the right. I was joking. I said I can have Cortana write the article. I can have this guy do the proofreading, and then I can have Siri publish it, and I can just nap. Uh... But I, I, I might disagree a little bit with you, Andy. Uh, I, I agree that Sonos could leap on this, but they haven't shown any. They said they were going to do it at the beginning of the year. They haven't shown any initiative up to now. And I'm, I am, I don't, I think that they're really in a world now. We've, we've, we tested it and it works quite well. You can get all the Amazon Echo speakers to play in party mode without any latency, any echo. Works great. So anybody who's invested in either dots or taps or echoes or 
or or shows or the new look uh, will have that capability. I just I feel like I feel like Sonos is late to the party, but I hope well, I hope you're right because I have a the, massive the, investment the most, in Sonos. The most powerful limiting factor in any technology is the desire to actually do something. Uh, I mean, Apple can do whatever. Apple can do anything. Google can do anything. All these companies can do whatever. They just have to decide that they want this thing to get done. Of course. Uh, and I, I don't think I don't think that anyone in Sonos is at, uh, is denying that uh, this sort of speaker is a threat. Uh, and I don't think they I, I think they also realize that, again, these tiny, tiny little speakers that they don't they aren't great speakers, but they're good enough speakers. And remember what happened with uh, with uh, camera phones. They are still not great cameras, but they're good enough for what people want to use a camera for in general. And so the ability to say, but we have a 28 megapixel self-stabilizing 341 degree camera. Say, so, yeah, but we don't want a $400 one of those. We'd much rather have a free one of those that's built into the thing we already have. So that's, I think the bigger threat is really these really good $100 speakers. Uh, and now that now that Amazon is, you can routinely get uh, an Echo for a hundred bucks now. They everybody is shifting in response to a product that hasn't shipped yet, and I think that's the that's the that's Apple's uh, core competency to right. scare everybody with yeah. just one good demo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but if it if it lives up to its promise, I think I, I can see HomePods throughout my house. Yeah, I mean that's 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 why we're going to get. I, I'm sure we're going to get a great demo next Tuesday because if they, I think everybody's sort of programmed to know that whatever Apple makes, they're not going to be able to make enough of them, uh, and so. <laughs> That's the new normal, have, isn't it? That's so terrible. <laughs> exactly. I mean, how, how many people, everybody I know who has AirPods, myself included, will always, when whenever we're asked, you say, oh, well, they're great. They really work, work wonderfully. But then people can't translate that into actually buying a pair. So there's, I think that uh, they, they, I think everyone at Apple knows that they're going to sell out of their entire first run of, uh, of the, uh, of the, of HomePod about 28 minutes after they open pre-orders. Yep. And I think that their their goal uh, for, for Tuesday is to make sure that they make such, they, they, they push so many emotional buttons about HomePods, uh, the HomePod, that they will make sure that if they say, and it's available for order today. And so that's, 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 the, other, that's the other advantage that you and I and Alex will have that uh, over everywhere else in the room that I will have like another screen ready on the Apple yeah, page as soon as pre-orders. Yeah. While, while, you, while you saps are taking notes and taking pictures, I'll be placing an order for a $300, $50 speaker that I don't need. I do think, though, that's one of the reasons Apple no longer does that. I remember being in an Apple event where they said that, and it was a race to get out of, uh, it was at the time Moscone West, and run up to the Apple store on Market yeah. Street and get that. <laughs> Literally, Even during WWDC, remember, like they put the laptops on sale, and then suddenly there was a developer line around the block to yeah. buy the new, yeah. uh, the new, the new MacBook. So Alex Lindsay and although, I huffed up the street to get, to get whatever it was. Although the, my my one piece of uh, of envy is, I'm wondering if your if Renee and everyone else there is not going to go home with some little tchotchke, if not a piece of working hardware in celebration of the fact that we are now opening the Steve Jobs Theater. Whether it's a, it's it maybe even like a really nice print I think uh, so. on really good paper. I think so. Uh, I, I, one thing I would really like to be there for is I, I'm sure there will be at the beginning some acknowledgement of Steve's memory and the fact this is the Steve Jobs Theater. And, oh, if uh, they play that Yo-Yo Ma video, I'll cry. Like right in front of everybody, it'll be horrible. You know what? They might. I mean, I could see I them, you know. Doing something like that, and they should do something like that because this yeah, is the yeah. this is the new the the campus was really the last thing Steve Jobs did, uh, and uh, and it's now open, and this theater is aptly named for uh, Steve Jobs, so it'll be very that I I look forward to that. It'll be a touching mm -hmm. moment for uh, for it everybody. was his stage, yeah. yeah. I look out look out for whatever if there's going to be some sort of a plaque there or some sort of a commemorative there the 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 one thing that's been missing from all of this coverage that we've been seeing all the photos have been snuck out is that you don't see any art anywhere around here and you think about how in the 40s and 50s and 60s how corporations were commissioning uh Picasso and they're commissioning uh they're, they're, and they're, they're commissioning uh, uh um, I think it was another company did uh, Mondrian. There's another company that's doing uh, Alexander Calder sculptures that didn't exist until this insurance company that was flush with post-war money basically had this huge sculpture made or this huge mural put in. And I, 
I would be excited to see what Apple's taste in art would be and what kind of sculpture they would commission and what kind of paintings and murals they would commission, what kind of tile work they would commission. I have to say that I'm, I'm, there's a, the opposite of brutalist architecture, I think is what we tend to see in like the Apple store redesigns and what I've seen from this campus design where it's like, it's just so soft. And so there's so lack of detail that there's there needs to be something amazing that when you turn the corner that you're glad that you continue to walk another half a block in Andy, order to see it. Andy, the building itself is the art, Andy. It's the finest. No, you don't you don't know until the employees move in. I mean, we can design it, but until people start to use it, we don't know what it is. I, I know what you're saying though, Andy. I'm think I'm reminded of the the what we what we colloquially in San Francisco call the banker's heart, which is two hundred tons of black Swedish granite out in front of the B of A building. Uh, yeah. And th this is a very famous. There's Calder. Uh, there's a there's a a, mon a, a fountain in uh, San Francisco. There's these this kind of public art uh, was kind of a, a status symbol for corporations in days gone by. But I also think Apple has a different aesthetic a little bit. I don't I don't remember seeing yeah, a lot of art on the at one end. I know of the it's loop the Steve either. Jobs pictures. The uh, in the Apple Media Center now. I L I think it's I L five. You go in and there's the iconic pictures of Steve Jobs, like with right. the Macintosh, and then there's the, the quotes, like if you do something great, don't dwell on it, but move right. on to the next. All of that is sort of what fills those buildings. I mean, what does yeah. Google have? A bunch of dessert statues. I mean, <laughs> this, uh, well, they're, they're they're little flashes algorithms. here and there. I've seen on, I've seen on campus, but okay. but it's not. But it's it's different. Uh, it's Google's different, campus. Google's campus is still in the mode where every time that they need more space, they buy another street. Right. And so it's not really, they didn't, it's, it's when you have the ability to say we are built, we are developing an entire parkland that's going to be our corporate offices, but we're also planting trees. We're also putting this here and we're also putting that there. I mean, I, I can imagine that it must be kind of boring to spend what will be probably literally half your life while you're employed at Apple in this space where there is no art. Where there is at no point do you turn the do you turn the corner and there is this amazing the, the, the amazing uh, tile work from an artist you've never heard of in a culture that is so savagely un, uh, underrepresented, and while you're waiting for your appointment or just you know bored because you you have to stick around waiting for something to finish and you have nothing to do you see a new thing in there or something that is as you're taking your daily walk from the cafe from the cafeteria to your office where you pass by again that piece of sculpture that. Maybe you will not even really notice it for the first three or four months, but then you start to see more and more detail. I'm, I'm, it's it's a very it's a very. I think it's very twentieth century. I think, I, think, I think you're I think the, I think living the, in the I, past. I, I think that, so, that there's a point at which I agree with you though. Taking at which taking away details and simplifying is a creative choice, and there's a point at which it's lazy. I don't know. It's. I, I've, I was really – I'm not saying that Apple should do this sort of thing or any other company should do this thing. I'm just saying that I was very, very keen to see if they would do this thing because uh, Apple's – Apple – again, I'm sure that Apple would have a really, really interesting eye towards art. And when I go into a modern Apple store and I see that their entire design aesthetic is beige wood and lighting and, and aluminum panels, it's like, okay – I mean, yeah. I'm here. I'm not, I'm not here. You're clearly not. You know, I'm not here to look at anything but the product. I get that, uh, and I I just wish it were a little bit more interesting. It's it's it's, it's no Lego. There's no Lego store. Let's I'm, see. I'm Let's a fan this. of public art. I completely agree with you, and I, I would like to see more. But I do feel like that's that's a, a different era. Feel. Yeah. Uh, Apple does Apple still have the Icon Garden? Remember they had the uh, the original Mac icons, uh, like little statues. I wonder if they still I don't have that. the pixel art for one, two, like the buildings. They're pixelated yeah, one, right. a pixelated two. Right. Yeah, that's not really it, is it? <laughs> uh, let's see. Anything else uh, to be said about this event? We'll see pr almost certainly a new Apple TV 4K HDR. I was yeah. wondering, it, what do the rumors say about the HDR standards that will be used? There's, there's at, at last count, I think four, but the big one is HDR 10, then there's Dolby. H so um, if if we look at iOS 11 and uh, macOS High Sierra as sort of the foreshadowing of this, then Apple is supporting HEVC High Efficiency Video Codec, which is the really weird name for H.265 at 10-bit level. So 8-bit is the traditional 4K, and then the 10-bit is the HDR version of 4K. Okay. So it's so 
I, you know, it's all software, so presumably whatever standards. Uh, well, and their chipset. So they built acceleration into uh, their latest series of Apple, like the A, I believe it's the, I forget if it's the A9, at least definitely the A10 and Kaby Lake, Intel's Kaby Lake series uh, provides hardware. That's the big difference between Skylake and Kaby Lake on the 4K front is that Skylake does 4K, Kaby Lake does 4K HDR, uh, and Apple's latest generation chips do 4K HDR as well. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Um I, th I think that's all of all of the uh, issues going on for next Tuesday. We want to be ready for next Tuesday. Is there a Doesn't one sound more like thing? A lot, but it's going to be a lot. Oh, it's a ton. It sounds like a yeah. lot. It's a ton. And one more thing lately has been Apple Music. So you never know. Oh, it could yeah. be Apple Video or something, but uh, or it could be like Research Kit. But they always have that in their back. Maybe that's pocket. why you have such a big backstage area because then you lift the black curtain up, and there are the Arctic Monkeys ready to perform for you. No, it's a live version of App Planet. <laughs> oh, let's get out quick. Where's the demo? <laughs> oh, look, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I, 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 I've Will even I am. blanked the names. Will, Will I, am. I Gwyneth am. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, look. Uh, okay. The stock, by the way, jumped as soon as that. Did you, is it, why don't they send a paper invitation? You, did you get a paper? Yes, it would be a, no. no, they. I mean, they don't. For WWC, they don't even send an email anymore. It's just a phone call. And for and for these events, it's a it's an email. But it's really cool because you tap on it, you say you're going, then you get a uh, an Apple Wallet thing that sh you know that shows up when you're there. Oh, you scan in. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, that's how they do the admission. Yeah, that's cool. Also, also with a given given the the shortened time frame, are they going to take the chance that everybody's going to get them on the same day at the same time, or are they going to have to deal with? Somebody got there right. a day before someone That's else, right. and then someone That's else right. is saying, hey, I'm okay, just wondering fine. if mine's in the mail. Uh, oh, no, you've got to email them. You're right. Yeah. Uh, it, they did release it. Thank goodness they put it out. I'm sure your uh, travel agent's happy, Renee. They put it out a little bit earlier than they usually do, um, a week and a half early instead of a week early. Yeah, and I always think that South Bay is going to make things easier, and South Bay never makes things easier. No. How about <laughs> – uh, How? I don't know why we're stuck. Are we stuck? The TriCaster's stuck on Andy. <laughs> Andy, I mean, would, can would, you if just you had to uh, lip sync one of everything? Yeah, everything we say, just lip sync it, will you? <laughs> if you had a choice of being stuck on somebody, it would be Andy too. <laughs> he certainly knows. The best he knows how to use that extra screen time. One question we got yesterday <laughs> in iOS today <laughs> is: uh, When will iOS 11 come out? Will it come out that day? The Gold Master, you, if Apple follows the previous patterns, the Gold Master for all four OSs will be released that day, and then developers will have uh, eight days to work on it. And then the Tuesday or Wednesday before the, the hardware launches, that'll all be pushed out. So you get it before the new hardware. And, and then yeah, we, I think <laughs> iPhone iPhone 3, 3G was the last one that did it the same day, and all the servers crashed. So now they do it like two, two or three days early. So it would be the... 20th or 21st. I'm not laughing at you, Renee. I'm laughing at Andy. And no, if, I mean, if it's, you're it's listening a, on audio, it just sounds like I'm insane, but uh, Andy's really got the lip sync. Andy there. has a Canadian beaver puppet. No, he's not a beaver. He's a groundhog, right? We did, we, we figured out the tail issue last time. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have a paddle. <laughs> yes. No. Wait, wait, Although maybe he can, he can switch it. Are, do you want to reboot the TriCaster or something? Or Okay, Andy, you could put the rodent down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, just thank you, Ernie. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate the camera time. Hello to all my new fans. Check out my Instagram. Support my work on Patreon. I've got a series of videos about things that are almost relevant, but not quite. So, basically, I'm a YouTube superstar. Bye. Bye. So long. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> put the rodent down that's the title of the show now uh let's see uh oh okay ios 11 i wanted to ask about that by the way uh i don't know if this is related but congratulations to tim cook whose uh, compensation now is looks roughly according to the register like 89 million dollars uh it is it is a rounding error and not even a very high decimal one on apple's yeah. Quarterly, never mind. Pay the guy whatever he wants. Uh, he sold, let's see, uh, $89 million in shares after exceeding his performance target. The windfall due to the sale of 560,000 shares, half of which were linked to the company's performance. He has 1 million shares of Apple if he stays 
there till 2021. And I think he's already pledged to, except for his nephew or nieces, I forget which one it is, uh, education. He's going to donate all that. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Yeah. Remember that he got a pay cut earlier this year. His modest $8.7 million take home was fortified, I'm reading from the register, which always is very good with words, by a package of vesting stock options that netted him a cool $135 million payout earlier. In That's the year. probably less than their paper budget. At Apple. Yeah, and like unlike, just for, as, just for as they point out, unlike a lot of other chief, chief executives down the road, uh, he's not a billionaire. He's doing all right. <clears throat> he's not poor. Doesn't have founder money. Tim, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, I do want to, Tim Cook said an interesting uh, thing, uh, which I liked a lot uh, in conversation with a reporter about the role of the CEO he also did a uh, um, hurricane, a hurricane relief email, and a DACA email today. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course, he's, uh, he's been he and the rest of Silicon Valley have been very critical yeah. of the change to DACA. But we'll talk about all of that in a second. Andy Anako and his puppet are here from the Chicago Sun Times. A puppet was, of course, independent. Uh, <laughs> Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. and our show today brought to you by Legal Zoom. I have a soft spot. Right here in my heart for LegalZoom because uh, they helped us start Twit way back when. Getting that LLC set up, the trademarks set up. When you run your own business, it, there are certain things you need to do. But uh, they, you know, legally, legal-wise, but uh, they can cost you a lot of money. And when you're just starting up, you don't have a lot of money. That's why I love LegalZoom. It saves money, but it also saves your time. You may already know over 2 million people have used LegalZoom to start their businesses, but their services don't end there. So, you know, <laughs> once you incorporate, then there's taxes, contracts, hiring employees. There's a lot of fine print. LegalZoom can help with that, too. They're not a law firm, but they have built a network of independent attorneys licensed in all 50 states who can give you what, you know, the advice you need to get you through the daily grind of running your business. And I love it because you don't have to worry about billable hours. It's always, you know, every time I talk to an attorney on the phone, I'm thinking, click, <laughs> another $50, click, another $50, click. You don't have to worry about that. LegalZoom's not a law firm. Up front, up, they, they pre-negotiate an upfront price with every one of these attorneys so you know exactly what it's going to cost you. And it's very affordable. Invest your time and money in growing your business and let LegalZoom help out with the legal stuff we all have to deal with. For special savings, don't forget the promo code MBW in the referral box at checkout. That's MBW at LegalZoom.com. That's also how they know you heard it here, and that helps support the show. So, Mr. Cook goes to Washington. He is, uh, he. you know, I, I really admire uh, Tim Cook, uh, not merely as a good operating officer, and that's really his real skill, but he's also a man of conscience and does not hold back. So tell us about those letters, because I haven't seen the new letters. Uh, so the one over the weekend was uh, for Hurricane Harvey support. He detailed how Apple had donated $2 million uh, directly, and they did a match with employees, where they did a two-to-one match with employee donations, and also let people donate through iTunes. And I think the total, just after a couple of days, was $3 million already. Nice. And the Coast Guard's using uh, iPads. I, uh, I, so that was really cool. That was a woman, uh, a young lady with sickle cell anemia who was just stuck and couldn't get out. And she couldn't get through to 911 and she couldn't really figure out what to do. And she, <laughs> the quote was amazing. She said, I know Siri was really smart. So I asked Siri to call the Coast Guard and it did. Um, now, I tried to do that, <laughs> by the way. Um, have you tried it? Well, you can't because you're in the US. I don't have a Coast Guard. You don't Guard, have a I Coast know. Guard. So what uh, Siri did on my iPhone when I said call the Coast Guard is it dialed emergency services. I can't do it because yeah, I took the so I, I don't know. I, like it's it, it it is a dynamic service, so it could always be changing things. But the Coast Guard came, and the first group wouldn't take her because they were tasked only with the elderly. But then a second group came, I think the next day, and they evac'd her. Nice. Um, and nice. She, she was in a lot of pain, so that was uh, to put it mildly. Uh, so that was great. And it's just it's one of those things where like you don't think about the voice activation until you're in an accident and your phone gets thrown across into the back of the car and you can't reach it. Right. And then you can use it to call or the SOS button as has right. also helped people because your watch doesn't leave your wrist. It's right there and you can still use it. These voice services are great. I had a call the other day on the radio show. 
from a guy who fell and broke his hip and he couldn't reach his phone. So he, but he knew that the, he realized, oh, I can use the echo to call my brother's echo. Echo is only echo to echo calling, but he called his brother's echo and said, get over here. I just fell. I think I broke my hip. Uh, so yeah. it saved him. You should train your family, like go go through it with your kids, with your parents, with your loved ones. Idea. Just make sure everybody knows that it's there yeah. and how to use it and what the most yeah. effective ways of using it are. My mom has, I uh, gave her a couple of Echo Dots. Now she has an Echo Show. And I, I have, that's, thank you for reminding me. I've, I've told, and we've made calls on the show, but I've, but I'm going to remind her she can use that drop-in feature. If anything, if she can't reach, you know, can't get up or whatever, use it and yeah. reach me. Uh, and of course, if you have a Google Assistant, uh, one of those Google Homes, it can call another phone so yeah. but you have to set that up ahead of time as well so that's worth worth doing and and if you've got your uh, i always turn on hey siri on my uh, yeah. devices because I, I like that feature but it's a good reason to have that on as well yeah. absolutely so uh of course also, this morning i got some uh, i i, I, and I imagine do, go ahead uh, sorry did we talk about uh, daca yes yeah so t yeah so tim also had a really really nice uh, email to all of his employees uh, about uh, the Deferred Action for Childhood arrival, uh, Arrivals program, uh, saying that, uh, hey, look, uh, 200, at least 250 of our employees are here under DACA. Some of them came here as young as two years old. Many of them were telling me that they have no memories of any place other than the United States of America. Uh, and he said, I'm d deeply dismayed that 800,000 Americans may soon find themselves cast out of the only country they've ever called home. And the last, uh, and promising that he's, that Apple as a company is going to work and lobby uh, representatives of both parties to see that these people are protected. Uh, but the last paragraph is really nice because it's not, uh, it doesn't pussyfoot. It says, despite this setback for our nation, this setback for our nation, I'm confident that American values will prevail and we will continue our tradition of welcoming immigrants from all nations. I'll do whatever I can to assure this outcome. That's that's pretty strong stuff from a CEO. That's not it's not. Well, gosh, we want to protect. We want we'll do right by our employees. And gosh, let's find some solutions. It's no, this is bad for the country to get rid of this this program. This is against American values. And basically, we're basically for welcoming immigrants from everywhere. And there are one particular powerful person that is seemingly opposed to that idea. Uh, so that's that's the sort of stuff that I like to see. Uh, from a company like Apple, uh, they're they're so big that when they are silent, they help people do bad things. So if they if they feel that this is a wrong thing, I think that their place is it's not out of place for them to make a statement like this. And yeah. this is exactly what I was hoping to hear. I, from. I I got the notification on my phone this morning. I was so depressed. I, I just it was I was speechless. It's just a shameful shameful uh, thing. And at this point, all we can hope is that Congress uh, writes uh, this wrong. These these uh, children do not deserve this kind of treatment. Well, it goes back to that interview from last week where Cook said when governments you know, are abdicating their responsibility, well, that's, it's up to That's the one I wanted others. to talk about, yeah. yeah. That, this is very interesting. Do you have the quote for that? Let me see if I can I don't find have, it. I don't have it in front of me. Did but we it talk was, about it last week? I don't think so. Yeah, it well, was we in, did. I think, yeah. Okay. So it was, uh, yeah, he, he, he said... I'm not sure I would say businesses should step in where government fails. That was the fortune uh, interpretation of it. But I do think, he said, I quote, I think we have a moral responsibility to help grow the economy, grow jobs, to contribute to this country, and contribute to other countries we do business in. And, uh, you know, um, when... Yeah, that's the one, the reality. Yeah. yeah. When, where is it? The reality is. is that government for a long period of time has, for whatever reason, set of reasons, become less functional and isn't working at the speed that it once was. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I don't think speed is the issue, but okay. <laughs> I think Tim has been very, you know, in all of these, he's very diplomatic. Well, but, he has to serve well, the, good, the, the goodness of the, the shareholders. Right. Uh, he can't He can't be po that political. Uh, yeah. Well, but remember that uh, can... Could you ever imagine that the energy industry can have as much influence over the lives of every citizen of the United States of America as they do have right now? That you can have you can have installed as the head of NASA somebody who is not a scientist, basically has no experience that way, but can toe the line about making sure that uh, that uh, environmental research is curtailed. And uh, it's if uh, if the industry if the energy industry can have that kind of influence, then perhaps the technology industry. Or any other industry with that kind of clout has the responsibility to be the only force that can fight it. So 
I don't know. I'm, I'm just it. I, 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 there are a lot of good things that big companies can do. Again, they they are under no obligation to do any of them. But uh, when they when the Powerball got uh, three quarters of a trillion dollars a couple of weeks ago, uh, a lot of people were thinking about dreaming about, hey, what if I I'm going to buy three speedboats and crash them into three other speedboats that I bought? My 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 dream is like, no, I'm going to not tell any any elected official how to vote. I'm just going to make it very very much known that if an if the energy industry backs their other backs an opposing candidate in a primary because of them voting their conscience i will replace whatever money i will match dollar for dollar plus a hundred bucks whatever <laughs> the energy industry was doing because this is a force that needs to be countered and sometimes it's uh, it's a uh, again another big company another big industry is the only one who can do that i should point out that there are some ceos who are a little more strongly worded mark zuckerberg's post this morning this is a sad day for our country the decision to end DACA is not just wrong, it's particularly cruel to offer young people the American dream, encourage them to come out of the shadows and trust our government, and then punish them for it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, a, that's a little stronger. I'll, I'll, I'll say that this, this is what sickens me about the immigration policy we've been seeing this year, that it's not the, as uh, as this man so delicately put it, the bad hombres that are being caught. It's the people who have been, when they're, when they're who have been asked you're going to have to come up, show up for regular meetings with an agent to make sure that we know who you are and where you are. It's these people who are coming to those meetings who are working for it. The people who are when the government says, hey, trust us, we'll let you stay in the country if you and join this program. It's the people who have let their names be known, let their faces be known, who come when called, who do what they're asked. Those are the people who are getting rounded up and sent away. And that just kind of sickens me. It isn't. I guess a surprise. I mean, Trump ran on the whole anchor baby BS that these kids were yeah, somehow but, being well, used by their cruel parents. Parts, well, particularly you know, ironic. Huh? I was, I was just going to say, oh, wait a minute, one at a time. Like, Go ahead. The Canadian may speak. I was just going to say, like, one of the particular ironies is seeing the people who were very supportive of some of those policies now being hit by them when it's members of their own family and, you know, not realizing that um, the values they were exposing were going to hurt them, you know, hurt them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I mean, he he also said that he's going to protect uh, uh, <laughs> he's going to protect uh, LGBTQ. Uh, and no, he went I, back no, on I know. That. He I said know. he said they wouldn't raise oh, he I wouldn't uh, touch Social Security. He went back on that. No, Can't he also go back on the immigration <laughs> thing? Yeah. Well, can, can he go back on a promise a that was going to hurt people? In any in any event, the the uh, I do hope, although. When you talk about Congress doing anything, hope is a big part of that word. But I do hope that Congress, they have six months to, to change this, and I hope that they do something. It's interesting, though. This is one uh, um, issue that Silicon Valley has not been uh, careful not to say. I mean, they re this because a lot of these kids work at these companies. Hundreds, yeah. hundreds work for Facebook. Hundreds work for Apple. And so they're, they're, they're really defending their employees when they're talking about this. Uh, let's see. I was just going to say one little cap on that is that Tim Cook, the Cook Doctrine, originally people used that to describe his effect on Apple, where their Apple is going to provide differentiated experiences and control core technologies. And now we're seeing this whole new Cook Doctrine where it really is that sort of RFK golden path. And he wants to make sure he lays as many bricks as, as came before him, Yeah, which is a real interesting thing to see. Yeah. Apple also defending the open, open internet in a letter to the uh, yep. FCC, as long as we're on the, the, the politics uh, part of the they've show. They've been writing a lot this week. They've been, they've been very active. And, you know, I, I really wonder if this is going to have any impact. Uh, Jip Pai, the chairman of the FCC, has already kind of implied, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care how many millions of comments we get in support of it. <laughs> we're, we're not going to do anything about it. We'll listen. We're, we'll say no. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad that they wrote the letter. Uh, it's interesting because... The people who most benefit from the uh, uh, elimination of net neutrality are the incumbents, the big companies already who've made their money. They can pull a ladder up behind them. Uh, but uh, the, it, it really impacts startups, companies that want to use the Internet uh, that may not have the money or the wherewithal to, to get a high-speed lane on the Internet who are going to suffer. So I, it was in, you know, if Apple's not acting in its, in its own interest when it says... Um, we want to protect the uh, open internet, except that they are acting in the interest of all of us, trying to preserve and, uh, net neutrality. And also, these public comments are useful to the people, the organizations that are fighting a, a legal challenge against uh, the end of net neutrality. 
because again, it's public. They're, they're, the FCC is required to get public comment. Uh, they're also required to share that with anybody who requests it. So, if there, if people, if uh, an organization wants to uh, attack a certain argument that the FCC is making about why they are not supporting net neutrality, they can point to all this stuff and say, "Well, look, we've got here. Here are uh, here here's, here are comments from." Every single leader of the internet right now saying that this is a bad thing, that you're full of crap here. So when you're saying that uh, that it's going to address a shortfall in the ability of independent of uh, regular consumers to get access to the internet, here are again 300,000 people who sent you emails saying that this is not how I use this is how I use the internet and it would not affect them, uh, it, it would not improve their lives in that way. So uh, the so the FCC can do whatever they want. But if they can't be swayed by public opinion, then perhaps lawyers and a federal judge at some point will say, no, you're not you're not going to do that. Mm. Oh, by the way, speaking of this essential phone, which I was uh, <laughs> booting up, uh, I just want to point out the notch because we think the yep. notch will also be part of the iPhone experience. Right. Yep. Yeah. I tweeted that when they announced the essential. I said, "Oh, this, you know, that's this is not the iPhone 8, but it's close." And people yeah. started making fun yeah. of me, and now it's going to be fun to see. The, the, the point on this, and I guess it's true of the iPhone, is that the bar at the top of the phone on an Android is rarely used. I mean, it's it the notifications are to the left and the right of it. Is that the case also? Yeah, it's pretty. The only thing you're well, losing yeah. with a notch is that is the the time of day, and presumably well, Apple has a way around that. They, yeah, they they can easily split it left and right, put the time in the corner, yeah. and then use uh, network notifications. It's it's a much it's, it's an even better situation for Apple than for Android, because with Android, every notification can put an app icon up there. Whereas right. with Apple, they right. just use it for hardware notifications. Right. It's a, it, Bloomberg had a good rundown, I think, today or yesterday uh, about things. Uh, but basically, they, they they have an article in which they claim to have seen the phone itself. Uh, I don't know whether that's through hardware or through photos, but there is the phrase that based on things that we have actually seen, uh, and they're talking about how, for instance, the, the home button is going to, if the home button is not going to be there, basically it's, it, the replacement for the home button is going to be the swipe up from the bottom of the screen action. Uh, that's going, and a bunch of new behaviors that turn apps into more of a Palm OS card uh, sort of layout than anything else. So here's the, if here's the advantage if you, if you want to see it. Uh, this is an iPhone 7, and you see it's physically bigger, but the screen is not bigger yep. uh, than the essential phone. So getting rid of the bezels, even if you have to do something as kind of compromising as put a camera notch in there, really does make an appreciable difference in the uh, size of the phone without... And one of the debates, the I'm assuming it was internally earlier, is whether you own the ears or you hide the ears. And I think you, like, you, you make the bar black. Yeah, yeah I think you own, own the ears, ears because that makes the yep. display really yeah. like an infinity display. Yeah. Yeah. Also, because remember that this is a the new ones will have an OLED display, and on an OLED display, black is black. Black is yep. No, black is not a backlit black pixel. Black <laughs> is no light, no nothing. So you will just see the time in the upper corner. You will just see uh, this the uh, signal strength in the upper corner. It's not as though it'll it'll. I I I wonder if Apple will keep that lit. Uh, for most people, I don't. I, I don't know what their aesthetic would be, but black is black. They will be able to get that, rid of that if they want. Don't to. get a white. Don't get a white faced iPhone though. Well, you can. Be, well, no. The, well, the white faced one looks really good. But you, oh. uh, Steve Stratton Smith, um, put up some of the frameworks that they're going to give developers to let them sort of control the the notch the uh, the status bar on the yeah. notched phones. And Apple's is way wider because it doesn't just have the camera; it has the earpiece, the camera, and the the new uh, 3D sensor. Um, array, so it's going to be going across the top of it. Uh, but yeah. I think you know we'll get used to it. It's a it's a different aesthetic than what we've had from Apple before, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to something different. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Bloomberg said that internally they refer to those two visible tabs as the ears of the yeah. screen. Ears is good. I like it. Which would which would be pretty adorable. Yeah. I mean, it's this the is, is like it just sort of, retroactively. This is part of the long discussion about how unfortunate it is that's. So much of the conversation about technology is about silly, nitpicky things that don't matter whatsoever. There are going to be people that are going to say, oh, well, Apple's totally ruined the, aesthetic, ruined the aesthetic of the phone by having this notch visible. Just like people were saying, oh, I can't, I can't take the Motorola of, uh, uh, smartwatch seriously because it has that flat tire at the bottom. Or, oh, isn't it horrible that Apple has a camera bump and I thought that Apple would never do it. None of these things matter. If there's such a bad thing, don't buy the phone. That's fine. Uh, but it's not as though you're adding it's not as though it's, they're making a fundamental, practical, functional change that will affect your life every single day. Uh, so this in is my just defense, though, Andy, thing. 
In my defense, it was marketing Renee that, that drew umbrage at that because they called it the 360. And if they called this the iPhone notchless, I'd be making just as much fun of it. <laughs> Uh, we're going to take a break, come back with more. A friend of mine who's an uh, Apple iPhone developer has received some uh, disconcerting news from Apple about his apps. Part of, I think, Apple's attempt to clean up the App Store, but are they going too far? We'll talk about that and a lot more. But first, a word from Texture. I see on my Texture app they're celebrating their second anniversary. They've got a nice referral plan uh, in there because of that. What is Texture? Well, think of it as like Netflix for magazines. Uh over 200 of the world's best magazines. This is my texture. I love this uh, because I've always got something great to read on my iPad. Uh, texture has curated sections. This is new and noteworthy stories. So stories that I might not actually read because they're magazines I don't know about, like Health or Outside Magazine, Newsweek, Bloomberg Businessweek. There's the top 10 reads from GQ, The New Yorker Time, Men's Health, Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest, Reader's Digest, who knew? Uh, look at that. 10, 13 mind-blowing discoveries scientists made this year. So these, what's great about the curated stuff is it's not necessarily stuff you would, uh, I don't typically open the Reader's Digest, but I've got it on here. I've got everything on here, uh, including all the magazines I love, top stories in health and fitness and entertainment. My library is rich. These magazines can automatically be downloaded so that I can, uh, I can read them on a plane or anywhere offline. I have to say, I, I, as you know, I'm a kind of a Shutterbug. Shutterbug magazine is one of many photographic magazines uh, I get. Uh, National Geographic would be another example. And I ha as good as a, a magazine looks, the photos on your iPad or your phone or your tablet look 10 times better and you can zoom in you can really take a look at those see the detail this is as close to the original photo as can be not some screened printed version if you're a photo buff texture is amazing uh sound and vision there's a magazine i probably wouldn't subscribe to but you notice i download it because it's easy it's free it's part of the deal it's part of my subscription the nfl previews coming atlantic magazine travel and leisure every week there's something great in the new yorker but i always felt guilty when i got the paper edition because I wouldn't read it all. It would pile up and I, my coffee table would be buckling under the weight of all the magazines. Now with texture, you get them all. And bits weigh nothing. One low flat fee, 200 magazines, Apple's one of Apple's top 2016 iPad apps. And, and you know what? For the price of a couple of subscriptions, you could have every magazine. Every magazine you'd want on your smartphone or tablet. Always there as you travel. Uh, it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's, it's what your iPad was made for. Texture's offering a 14-day free trial right now. If you go to texture.com slash twit, T-E-X-T-U-R-E, texture.com slash twit. Just, I, I, don't know, I don't know how to convince you to do this if you haven't done it already. This thing is awesome. It's, it's, what, it's what your tablet or phone was made for. And by the way, you can put it on up to five devices. Texture, it's awesome. Texture.com slash twit. Twit. Give it a try. If you haven't, give it a try today. And if you have, celebrate their second anniversary. Go to your Texture app. You'll see a pretty nice offer for sharing Texture with your friends. Uh, let's see. I guess one of the big things Apple will talk about next Tuesday will be uh, augmented reality, AR kit. Let me ask you once again, am I at any risk that I'm going to have to buy Robert Scoble dinner in Paris we have a bet, you know. He said there was going to be a clear iPhone this year. If it's based on what was in his head, maybe. If it's based on what he actually said, then I think you're in the clear. It's not a clear iPhone. There's no clear iPhone in the offing, I don't think. No. All right. No. It's clear because they, the screen is so damn big. It looks like you can see through it. Yeah. Same but, as like Samsung. But Galaxy look at that. Already. See, if you look at an AR app, uh, that is a, a kid using a current iPhone uh, yep. and looking at their lawn and their, and their pathway, but on it is a truck or something. That's what AR is going to do. And we're seeing some of the new AR uh, apps. Jiffy, Walking Dead. And we dead. just found out that Matthew Panzerino gives his daughter an iPhone upside down. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you, Matthew? What are you doing, Matthew Panzerino? Oh, right, right in to, to, this tech to, 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 to his credit, we've learned that he's the sort of parent that doesn't say, you're holding it wrong. He's, so he's better, he's, he's better than Steve Jobs in that, in that effect. He, he says, hold show it, my, my shiny shoes. Hold it any way you hold want it, to, dear. Hold it. If it's working, go ahead. Yeah. 
So uh, IKEA is, uh, of course, when you think about augmented reality, IKEA is, is the obvious. That makes sense. This is uh, from. I got awesome to try that app. It's actually a lot more fun than you think. There's not a lot of content in it yet. Like you, you basically put down a chair and you can drop it and you can change the type of chair and and how it looks and where it goes. And they don't do wall detection yet, so it'll. You got to make sure you have a oh. nice big empty flat surface. Maybe, maybe that's uh, the kind of thing floor. that the new iPhone might be better at. And maybe that maybe they have different features depending on which phone you're using. On. Uh, entirely possible. Yeah. I was trying it on an iPhone seven. So you yeah, had exactly that. You could put it in. You could rotate it. You could change the color. You could change the style. And it did really good job with the lighting it did a really good job with the placement it looked really stuck on the floor uh and, and it was fun i mean it, it's limited in what you can do with it now but it was also one of the more conservative apps i got to try it was very much as you would expect um an ikea ar app to work yeah it's, it's, uh, it's panzerino it's, it's says 2000 items available at launch so this is you know the version you you were playing with and he's yeah. playing with is early yeah yeah yeah, there's there's going to be remember that we're all seeing demos and I think I talked about this a week ago or two weeks ago where we're not seeing demos of AR kit not working well. We're seeing demos of things that are working great. And so uh, that's, that's going to be a big challenge for Apple. As wonderful as this technology is, they have to make sure that they set expectations correctly that, no, you're not going to necessarily be able to – it may not detect a wall correctly or it may not necessarily scale correctly the first time. Uh, and the when you first launch the app, the ability – that it doesn't – you don't just lift it up like a camera and instantly it sees where the floor is yeah. or where the table is. There's That's why there are games. And it wasn't until my third or fourth demo that I realized that there were a couple of games that were tricking me into waving the phone around. Yes. But it was actually trying to get a sense of what the room was like. So, uh, so if that's disruptive for people, then they're going to have to be prepared. Apple's going to have to prepare people for that, that this isn't a magic technology. It just allows a lot of magical features to happen. But expectations are going to have to be set correctly. Yeah. I want a cupcake now. Yeah, some of there's very different approaches too. Some of them are very quote unquote honest where they show you the dots that they're using to like as you move it around you see the dots start to form on the flat surfaces that it's identifying and you you actually get to see the sausage being made for the app. Other ones are trying to create an experience where they're like, "Oh, find the bird." And you're trying to move the camera around until you find the bird and that's actually you letting it scan the room while while it's doing the setup. Yeah. So we should see a bunch of really interesting approaches. It it also made me think about how this is going to lead to, even if you're not interested in AR kit, how it's going to lead to improvements for pretty much every phone. Because one of the things that iPhones don't do, spec uh, they they they're okay, they're good at low light, they're good at uh, they're they're good at uh, 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 they're 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 good at uh, uh, dynamic range, but they're not fantastic at it. However, if you're going to ask people to go into their living room and set down furniture or go into uh, play a game, your kid's going to be playing a game inside an arbitrary living room, these are not well-lit spaces. These are not If they're trying to put a sofa in a corner where there is no light or if they're trying to figure out which of these 18 lamps do I want to put into that corner, it's probably a dark corner to begin with. So they're going to have to improve the camera hardware or at least tune the image processor uh, to be able to handle that stuff better. Uh, the, 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 there's so many reasons why the new top of the line iPhone is going to be so interesting. One of them is going to be to see how many things they changed simply to accommodate AR kit and to optimize it for this new kit. Let's see. Here's uh, Food Network. I think cooking makes a lot of sense. This is uh, actually a cupcake decoration app. So you place and decorate virtual desserts. Makes me so hungry. I know. This seems like a very bad idea for my diet. but <laughs> uh, And so this is just a table with, the with I don't know, what the decorations are on the table. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. He's, oh, oh, we found a plate. We found a plate. Oh, I see. It's looking for a plate. So you need to have a yeah, plate. And then, and then you yeah, put the okay. cupcake on the plate. And didn't get the it didn't place it it didn't size it correctly for that plate you had uh, to manually yeah, scale it yeah. down so but you know I don't think people will mind that kind I don't know of if they thing. have no, that one there but they had a really good one where you it would show you different lipsticks and it was really good at sticking the lipstick on your mouth so like you could right. just basically flip through it yeah. and you would see and then it would put virtual windows up with all the different makeup treatments that you could walk around and look at there were some odd choices like sometimes they would put flat 2D models instead of 3D models on tables and it would look really wrong and I imagine. <laughs> It's early days, but oh yeah, that, that's the one. Yeah, um, that's uh, is that Sephora? It's one of the one of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got to try that one too, and yeah. that was a. I, I look really good in teal. I didn't think that would be the case, but I think it's an interesting demo. I have to say, and I could see yeah. it there be an audience for it. Well, just mouth matching is interesting technology. It's very. It's doing a very good job. Yeah. That, I, I, I was wondering about that. Is I can't get an answer. Is is AR? It, it, it does AR kit do face matching and face face mapping? 
I or don't know. Or, or All I saw was the library that I, have, I haven't seen that in any other demo app. So I didn't know whether that's remember that AR kit can be combined with other code libraries yep. that people are using for AR. Um, and so that's why you really have to ask these questions like uh, uh, Google uh, had their G Google had an AR core that they released or excuse me, yep. released to developers uh, last week. And again, really wonderful demos. But one of the things it can't do is it can't like place a poster. It, it doesn't do vertical surfaces yet. Mm -hmm. So you can't do things like I wonder how I wonder if that Che Guevara poster I see at the student union will look good <laughs> in my dorm room. You can't put it there. It, it, it's, it, it'll require someone else's software to do that. So it's it's an exciting time. I'm glad I'm glad to see that now both platforms are supporting it. But it's going to be <laughs> it, it, it's like I wish that there were a nutritional panel on the back of the box where you can say this contains 60% AR kit, 20% some open <laughs> source project, 30% something that we paid some Russian guy for. Yeah, and it's Gen 1 too, so I assume that over time we'll get the wall detection and the face detection and the yeah. some of these, analysis. I have to say some of these uh, uh, things may not even use AR kit, right? I mean, uh, yeah. Snapchat does a very good job of this exact kind of thing without AR kits help. This is like I think the point of this is to let anyone be Snapchat, not to not to be too glib about it, but to, like if you're a startup and you were gonna, you you can now work on the core technologies that you're good at and not have to also build out your own AR framework and presentation layer and image ingestion and all you know and computer vision, all those technologies, so that any company can sort of say we have this makeup app, we don't have to reinvent Facebook uh, Snapchat's filter technology, we can just use AR kit to get us. 3,000 light years ahead of where we would have been all on our own. Right, exactly. Just like, just like the developers of Scrivener uh, could focus on just making a word processor with just the features that they imagine would be great for word processor, they don't have to learn how to write a printer driver. They don't have to learn how to uh, do a, do a, an internet stack because all this stuff is built into the operating system. So this this allows a lot of a lot of uh, really wonderful mutants to come out of the woodwork. <laughs> if you had if you didn't have to write any AR code whatsoever, you just had to come up with an idea for AR uh, and essentially instead of spending two years learning how to write AR code, you could spend just a couple of weeks or a couple of months learning how to use AR kit. What would you come up with? And there's, there's a lot of people that wouldn't, this, this idea is just, uh, just stupid enough to be worth uh, a couple months of my time. It's not worth two years of my time. And the, out of stupid ideas, wonderful ideas come. I think we talked about this, Leo, like some of the best games on the Vive in the beginning were just single people using the, the unreal engine uh, built in stuff to make dungeon crawls and, lightsaber battles and it's just amazing what they could do with the built-in tools yeah well then so here's a couple of games here's a rise from climax studio this looks a lot like the minecraft demo microsoft drags out every time they show the hololens yeah. it's a tabletop something building or construction that uh you can interact with and move around with i have to point out that this just adds one more annoying <laughs> sing to your gaming you have to hold the phone in front of your face if andy's arm got tired holding up that puppet imagine you know him having to do this while he's playing the game the whole time i don't i well, don't know if this wasn't hold, it wasn't holding up the puppet it's that you and renee were talking so fast working the mouth <laughs> it just well you won't have to work the mouth with ar kit and if you do it with the, the, with the ipad pro it. which is clearly one of the ar kits chief platforms that's that's heavy and big and like the Star Wars chess. You got to sit there for the whole Star yeah, Wars chess game. I mean, game. really, are you gonna? I mean, I guess you could put it on a. There'll be a whole yeah, market for arms to hold <laughs> these, right? <laughs> in, it's in also, position. I mean, like when they when they first put out Pokemon Go, they they made a big deal of showing off the AR mode. I don't know anybody who actually plays. No, with we the all AR turn it off. It's just a great a demo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this will be the same thing. Like some of these will be real games. Others will just be proof of concepts. Yeah. And eventually, we'll find stuff like educate. Like we talked about education, uh, training. Uh, I'm not a twit, but I but Leo needs like to at least tell me how to restart the TriCaster, and he right. could be there in AR pointing a at the button that I have to, to press. I, yeah. I've always thought that could be a really big thing, and that's another yeah, thing I, Microsoft demonstrated with Hololens. You know how to how to fix a pipe, and you're actually under yeah. your sink, and you have got a plumber showing Groot, you. No, I am Groot. No, I am Groot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or I finally with, know what that reference is. I finally saw the movie after all <laughs> oh, these great. months. Yeah. Or or how, how Poppins, Google is, <laughs> or how, how Google is dealing with the uh, glass for enterprise, where as something that people are going to buy and put on their face and walk around with all day, no, but as something that a company is going to buy and then contract special software for, so that specifically these people on their work in their warehouse or in their production line will get uh, get value from it. Yes, so I think the I think that a lot of the most interesting AR stuff will be not specific apps, but 
a feature that gets added to Apple Maps, for instance, or a feature that gets added to Facebook or a feature that gets added to this uh, this this, this uh, GPS app. Uh, because it's it's kind of sad. I mean, as is as cool as the, again the AR the AR feature of uh, Pokemon Go is. Like Renee said, you stop using it after because it seems like a gimmick. You want to use the something that's a little bit more direct and more efficient. So that will be kind of a fail if it becomes a really cool demo or something that you will download this fun fart app, <laughs> the AR version of a fart app or a flashlight app, play with it for about two days and then forget that it's forget that it's there until you get to page 14 of your uh, app uh, app launcher and start to delete it. It needs to be something that people just understand, just like multi-touch uh, is part of the experience. So that's what's going to happen in about a year or so. I do think that kids particularly, and it, you, you, we talked at the beginning about Matthew Panzerino. Is that his daughter? Uh, I don't know if that's them. And it's, it, Matthew wrote the article, but I don't know if that's actually it's them. It's some, some kid he found. Uh, <laughs> but that, the kid was playing, I didn't know this, but now I realize The Very Hungry Caterpillar, which is a book my children adored. And putting that caterpillar in a kid's space, a young child, you know, three, four, five-year-old, Putting it in their space, that's Eric Carl, the uh, illustrator, uh, drawing the very hungry caterpillar. But putting it in the space, giving the book more life, I think that's a kid I could see being, there you go, is totally excited about doing that. So that's another market that the children's books, children's, I don't know, learning what, games, what? educational games, things like that. Yeah, I, I don't want to scare anybody, but... Given uh, is maybe there should be an age limit for this sort of thing because there, at a, <laughs> it, 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 we have there's an age at which you finally uh, a, a child finally gets object permanence. You the, the, right. yes. the idea that right. if I if I turn away if I put the teddy bear on the ground then turn away from it then turn back the the teddy bear will still be there. If they spend a lot of time with these games, expecting that there's, expecting that well, I, I put my glass of milk down here on this table, it might not be there. I might have to pick up pick up a phone to see if that glass of milk is still there. Uh, it's isn't it isn't it wonderful how we are technology <laughs> allows us to have this ongoing <laughs> have, have this ongoing you know scientific experiments on children and on our society <laughs> without having to get anybody's approval or anybody's thought about whether it's a good idea. On the other hand, do you really want FDA approval on augmented reality? Oh no, I'm yes. not that. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> we're all in a I'm simulation not, anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm, not, I'm not talking. We're, about we're that. playing. You, you know, we're you know we're shooting craps with our psyches all the time, Andy. Come on, that's 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 the nature of on this spaceship th we this, call Earth. Yeah, this revolution we're going through. Talking about being scared. Here's a scary one: The Walking dead you want zombies yes. uh, in your world no thank you mm -hmm. games are working it's on a new location-based ar game set in the world so this would be like dead. pokemon go not, it's not niantic though but they want to eat your brain on the apple app store soon so in expect to see a lot of people like this maybe. doofus wandering in the park that they're going to do um harry potter fantastic beasts There's as well niantic is uh, maybe Niantic, maybe someone else, but that's a franchise that's been rumored yeah, for a while. Yeah, Niantic has been... Uh, I'd heard that several times about Niantic, that they were going to basically take Pokemon Go and turn it into yeah. a Harry Potter game, which they should. It'd be awesome. I'd play that. Yeah. And I guess if you're a Walking Dead fan or you just like fighting zombies in the park, but I just feel like this is a risky proposition. <laughs> this, well, he's going to hit the guy behind him. This so. guy, I have a feeling... <laughs> uh, okay. I guess, you know, it's one way to get exercise. Uh, look out, there's this, you know, but this is the other thing to point out is that these games are always kind of constrained, not really that interesting. That's actually true of VR games in general because movement is difficult. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Also, the most, also in that grass, people are seen to be floating about eight to ten yeah. inches above the ground, so it's not perfect. But like I said, are you going to be one of those AR kit picky pickies? No, no, I'm just, I'm just. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It uh, doesn't look uh, like the floor matching is really working. <laughs> but that, but that could be a problem if it's not uh, zombies that you're killing. If it's, I'm expecting that if you're telling me that this uh, eight foot by twelve foot area, uh, rug is going to fit in this, uh, in, in this room, you know, it better I, fit. Uh, yeah, yeah, it better yeah. Be and, on the then, floor. and then, and then, and then I yeah. touch a button in the app, so great. And on that basis, I will order it. And then it turns out that it doesn't fit at all. Yeah. No, that's so, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. That re remember that as great as these demos are, these, this is very much 1.0. That uh, we're going to have to wait several months, if not a year or so, before we get the really good stuff going. And so, don't be. Uh, don't don't be turned off if the first experience is not a great experience. Keep again, you don't have to keep using it every single day, but come on back in a few months and see how things have improved. What's this one? Pixie Tracker uses Apple's AR kit to guide you toward lost items in augmented reality. 
Ah, that'd be kind of cool if you had a, a Bluetooth Polo. tracking Marco. device. Polo. You could look at your... Wouldn't that be cool? I, I wonder how that would work, though. I know mo, like our sponsor, the tracker, isn't, you know, because it's Bluetooth, doesn't really know, you know, like it's it, it would be great if you could say, where is where are my keys? And you look around your room and you see the keys in your sofa. But I don't think that information anyway exists in the, this would have to be a new a new kind of hardware tracking device that I'm not sure exactly how it would work. I mean, if that... It, how would how would the I, I presume the Pixie is much like Tile or or the Tracker our sponsor? I, I don't understand how it would know how it would have that information. Bluetooth isn't going to tell it where it is, mm. right? And the map isn't that accurate. It's a it's a great idea to use. Maybe our, it's using beacon technology. It'd have to do something like oh maybe it is that would be interesting. Could beacon give you directionality? Can you do you know it, where a beacon is exactly? I believe so. That's why they used them if as you're turning doors. around. Tells you the location. Yeah, remember, keys. look, look, look at that. In the earlier in that demo, you had the <laughs> spin around, right, until you get dizzy. So it is beacon. Maybe it is using beaconing. That's a, that would be an interesting idea. Yeah, look at that. So it's showing you your keys in an uh, superimposed on the screen, and there they are. Look at that. Ta -da. Ta -da. Look at this. Oh, okay. Did you see the size of the dongle? Okay, I get it now. It's this. It's this big. Yeah. Maybe there is beaconing in there, yeah, yeah. Because I don't. Th I mean, how would you? You couldn't really triangulate Bluetooth. You could say it's getting stronger. I guess you could do that, right? You could if you're if you're turning a it, it, colder, from a colder, static, warmer, warmer, warmer. You could do that from from yeah. a static position. It couldn't get that kind of location. If it, uh, again, it tells you turn around 360 degrees, it could certainly find out that the signal seems to be stronger from this place. Um, although. That's iffy as well because you don't know what kind of surfaces the signal is bouncing off of. So it's it's interesting. There, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to have to really craft their demos very, very well. A, de a developer can do a demo and then release it on YouTube. A company has to do a demo and then release it to lawyers right. who then have to say, okay, show me every piece of B-roll, every, every second of footage that was shot before this because we might need to have – more information given to people before they think that this is going to work. Yeah. It, I, I'm looking at the, the website, getpixie.com. It looks like it's just a standard Bluetooth tracker. So, but it is large. So I'm wondering if it can do more than, more than that. Okay. I can guarantee you that, uh, if, if this is doable, uh, the other guys will be doing it too. That's cool. Yep. So we'll watch with interest. Yeah, propagation of technology. Watch with interest. Yeah. Anything? And the, the best stuff is going to be stuff that we can't think about. I, that's gonna, what I think. It's a, you don't, again, it's, it's the it's the mutant developers that are going to really right. push this forward. Right. Uh, anything else we should talk about? I mean, here we are. This is it. The last show before the big reveal. Hmm. Andy, really mm. share with us your hopes and dreams for what Apple will be telling us next week. Uh, I hope they're going to be telling us that. Boy, did we screw up with that MacBook Pro. We promised that we're going to refund everybody's money and we're going to create a <laughs> brand new MacBook Pro with a decent decent keyboard. Also, we're going to really, really invest in the iMac, in the uh, Mac Mini. As a matter of fact, we're making it more powerful. We're going to make sure the price point is under $500 because uh, we think that that's a really important product. We're not just going to say that. We're actually going to back that up by saying uh, we want lots and lots of people to buy them i i hope that there i hope that there is a bobblehead of some sort given away from some minor uh, max celebrity uh from the through the executive board someone who's still there uh that we can basic and a, and a button that you push at the base that says something wise and something interesting um i uh, I, hope I, I do actually i know you're being a little facetious but i would love to see apple say yeah on saturday in the new screensavers you're talking to a, a caller mandy the clown who uh, had, re had got from her uh, place of employ an old cheese grater Mac Pro, the old Mac Pros, and and we and we brought mine out and we were, and it just remind me how beautifully engineered yeah. and expandable, and I've said this many times, but I would love to see whatever this next Mac Pro is. Apple acknowledged they already acknowledged that they kind of made a mistake with the trash can Mac, but really kind of go back to that expandability workhorse tool that would that would warm the cockles of my heart it would make me yeah. feel like they still care about i think the you'll Mac. be happy yeah 
Do yeah, you I know think something? he'll be happy. Do you know something? Well, I mean, the I'm, the iMac Pro addresses one part of the segment of their audience, but it's not expandable. Really it's an screen. iMac. No. Yeah. So that's I think that's why they may a culprit and are working on a more modular Mac with yeah. exactly sort of your, that type of consumer and, or Pro be, in mind. That would be awesome. And they really they don't have to do something cool and Johnny Ivish. The cheese grater was just fine, thank you. It was brilliant, though. I mean, I used to have tower PCs that were, like, you were forever fuddling with a screwdriver oh and removing God, things and yeah. cables. And these were amazing. You'd pull it out, you'd put a drive in, you'd pull it out, you'd oh, move the CPU around, you'd pull it out, you'd add a ramp. It was amazing. It was all on yeah. drawers. It was all toolless design. The The aluminum was thick, heavy gauge. Yeah. It just, it was a, it was heavy as hell. But who cares? You're not going to yep. carry this thing to your, you know, your birthday party this is for under the desk uh, yeah, oh they could just you know what you want apple you want to make everybody <laughs> happy just say you know we we think we'll make another cheese grater but this time we'll have the latest xeon cpus we'll have kb lake xeons we'll have the latest you know 1080 i ti yeah. and ddr5 memory up to 128 gigabytes or what just like really blow us away yeah, I, I won't be. I won't be. Dis I won't be disappointed if they don't mention Mac uh, at this event because it's it's just going to be too full of stuff for them to distract with anything they're not shipping. But I do every single statement that Apple makes. The thing that I'm hoping for most of all, in all seriousness, is something that will convince me that they really are serious about the Mac and they right. really do love the Mac and they're not just simply keeping it going until they run the clock down. I, I'm looking for signs of that. And and somebody's saying in the chat room at what price? The price is not an object for people for tools like this. They're professional tools. We already kind of stipulated that with the next generation iPhone. An iPhone Pro should be the should price should not be a factor in your design. You should design the best phone you can make. You're building it for Alex Lindsay. <laughs> You're building it for Alex Lindsay. And the same thing for the look how expensive these things are. It doesn't matter. This is a tool for a business that is investing in tools and uh, yeah. and wants something that will work for them. Where time is more valuable than money and the exactly. more time they can save and the more power they have, exactly. the better for them. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for. What are you hoping for, Rene Ritchie, tomorrow on Tuesday's I, event? I really want to see how they solve problems because a lot of the stuff is super interesting. Like when you look at just like you, you hear OLED display, uh, but how are they going to implement 3D touch on an OLED display because there's no LED to, to do the distance measurement anymore. If there is no touch ID, how are they going to implement face right. ID? Like I know technically it'll all sit on top of the same framework, but just the UI stuff, like do I look at it and then hold it towards the NFC thing? Uh, what, from what angle? What's the security uh, benefits or detriments going to be uh, with the new without the home button? How are they going to handle the gestures? Because there's only a there's only a few gross gestures that are easy to do. Everything else becomes these arcane gesture magic tricks. And we saw like with things like the BlackBerry Hub on BB10 that people they don't remember how to use them if they get too complicated. So how do they pack sort of? I think Palm Pre, like Andy's example, was a really good one. How do they sort of handle those metaphors so, uh, uh, with the ears on the top? Do they blend them in? Do they not blend them in? It's all like the implementation details uh, is what I'm super curious about. And if they can make really smart choices and they can really make uh, like it, it, face ID, for example, is not just a compromise because touch ID doesn't work in this package, but is a step forward. And the new way of accessing the multi-touch app launcher from swiping up is not just replacing the, the 3D touch gesture to get there, but it's actually an improvement. It makes the experience better and all, all those sort of things is what I'm looking forward to. Hall Amen. Hallelujah. And do you get, so you feel like at these talks, you do get what, a, a better understanding of Apple's goals and why they do what they did and, and, and that they give you that kind of information. You get to hear their take on it. Like right. whether I ultimately agree or disagree with their take, I get to hear sort of, uh, and it's not, it's not the rank. It's not the actual information. It's what their marketing department well, that's has what decided to tell you me. about it. It's more the spin on it, right? Why? But I want to hear that. I want to hear that so I can juxtapose. Like I have my assumptions. I'm going right. to go in and I, I try hard not to have, Pre, you know, pre-assumptions, but I have them. I'm human. But you get brief, you get briefings after the fact that might give you sometimes, more of that kind of information. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes it's later. Sometimes it's on the phone or follows up. But I like to hear where they're coming from because then, like, if they say we're inventing a screwdriver and some publication goes, Apple are idiots, this is the worst hammer ever, that's not really a fair take because they said they're making a screwdriver. I want to hear what they say so that I can sort of measure what they've given me compared to what they were, what, what they were trying to give me. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. I would love to see some talk about the Mac. I would love to see uh, a, a phone. I think we're going to get the another iPhone that's going to blow people away. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping it's not just an iterative, you know, improvement on the existing iPhones. I uh, HomePod, 
uh, finally a 4K Apple TV. We will be covering that event, uh, as I said, Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. I hope you'll tune in live and join us in the chat room. We can do the back chat. It'll be Alex Lindsay, Megan Maroney, and me. And uh, you can watch it live at live or twit.tv slash live. Uh, also announced, and I'm not sure why they pre-announced it uh, so far ahead. Coming this fall, well, I guess fall's here, almost, Pixelmator Pro. The folks at Pixelmator, who really do, I think, increasingly make one of the best image editing programs for the Mac, have said that they are going to release a brand new version, a Pixelmator Pro version, that will have non-destructive editing. Have many of the things people who, do, who use Lightroom and Photoshop are uh, looking for. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of Pixelmator, uh, yep. both on the iPad and on the Macintosh. And I'd be very interested to see what they come up with. They, they clearly have a big investment. And it's good to see somebody give Adobe a run for their money. Uh, Adobe's owned this market for so long. Oh, look at that. And Mac Native, which is the, the biggest selling point of Pixelmator. As opposed to Adobe, which is not? Sort of doing their own thing. Well, yeah. Adobe, like... For years, they had a different code base, and then they were using Flash for their interface. And now, still, they don't really have a Mac native interface. It's more of a they want people to see Photoshop. They don't necessarily yeah. see a Mac app. And Pixelmator leverages all of Apple's core frameworks and core technologies, and is much more power efficient. And uh, it just it's it, it is a Mac app in every sense of the word. Good, I can't wait. That'll be very exciting. So they just announced uh, this, and if you want to know more, you can go to their website, pixelmator.com. Slash. They're super smart people. Pro. <laughs> Are they French? They're, I don't know if they're Are French. They're European. French Canadian? No, uh, I forget where they're from. Yeah. They're probably from... Aren't they brothers? I think they're brothers. Are they? Two brothers. Yeah, just, like the, just like the Knoll brothers, right? Yeah, see, it says he's used Metal 2, Force Touch, 64-bit architecture. Yep. Heath, oh, it'll support Heath, the new high-efficiency yep. image format. That's very good news. This may Machine be the learning. photo, the photo editing program. Of choice. If I were Adobe, I'd be shivering in my yeah. Boots. And let's let's not let's not forget that there are also lots of people that they much rather just buy the app and own it yes. rather than pay for a subscription on the. Uh, it's if you use a lot of if you use, if you use a lot of different devices and a lot of different apps, uh, and you, you're a heavy duty user of Photoshop stuff, then that is a, ten bucks a month for the photo uh, photo package is a good deal. But there are a lot of people for whom. I don't really need to spend ten bucks a month forever, and I don't. It's not important to me that I also get the Windows version of this. It doesn't. It's not important to me that. So you can just buy what you want. It'll save save you money in the long run. Actually, so. Adobe has caused a, a bit of a storm. They've done a, a beta of Lightroom that they're dubbing Lightroom Classic, <laughs> <laughs> which implies this might be the last standalone Lightroom that you may may only be able to get it through Creative Cloud. I'm not sure, but the but the Adobe forums are going crazy with this beta. So, uh, oh, Leo, real time follow up. Lithuanian brothers, Salius Lithuanian. and Adias Dalid. Nice. I don't know how to pronounce it. Dalide or Dalid. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I talked to a good friend who is a Mac, or rather an iOS developer. He has a number of apps on iOS, like many, like five, that are different versions of the same kind of core app, and was informed by Apple you can only have one. Pick the one you want. And he, he was a little upset with the heavy-handed way Apple kind of said, You're, we're going to give you 90 days to fix this. Otherwise, we're going to pull those apps from the App Store. I can understand Apple's point of view. They want to clean up the App Store uh, from repetitive apps. Uh, you see a lot of apps that, you know, uh, you know, do slightly different things. Wrapper apps. Wrapper apps, things like that. But he has a, I think, I, can't, I don't want to say his name. I don't want to get him in trouble with Apple, but... He has a, a, a an app that it makes sense for the multiple versions, uh, and there it's a fairly expensive app, and so you buy the version that makes sense uh, to you. But he's got a solution. But he's he was a little bit put off by the heavy-handed way Apple did this and the very short time frame Apple gave him ninety days. Have you heard? I know you talked to a lot of developers, Renee. Have you heard similar complaints? Yeah, there's always like a little bit of, um, I mean, they, they deal with so many apps every day. There's always sort of some aberration where somebody comes down. There was It was famously James Thompson with uh, PCalc when they said he can't be a widget anymore. Right. And it was sort of somebody looked at it and decided that. And because it's a group of individuals, they just, you know, sh shot off a letter or you know, it happens over and over again. I think that's why you, you avail yourself of the appeal process, you know, uh, where he that appealed can go all the way up to the executive was, team. Yeah, he was told no, 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 no. Uh 
no no appeal for you you're you're this is what you got to do and he's going to do something but it's a, a great cost not just to him but to people who bought the other totally yeah versions. no it's it's the it's the downside of the approach that they use for the app store yeah. and he could still i guess escalate to phil schiller right um, call phil. that has worked on occasion yeah. yeah i mean that has worked phil has gotten yeah. involved in those things. yeah and you know I, I i do sympathize with apple's desire to clean up the app store in fact they're going to face a big uh, cleanup issue when they go to 64 bit uh, means a lot of apps will know will be not merely slow on this a iPad, but not work on this iPad. Well, there's also like there's there's been huge problems historically where, for example, banks or uh, airlines who built everything on uh, I don't I don't want to say ActiveX, but like really old web technologies, and all, all they could do for their app was basically make a web wrapper and and show their web button for processing secure transactions. And they some of those apps look like they're still written for iOS four. And they've never updated. And some of the either some of them will be forced to update now, or they'll leave the app store, which will inconvenience people who use those horrible apps. Um, but this it's is, you know, they this don't want to spend the money. This is a problem on every app store. Google goes through this. Microsoft's going through this. Uh, it's just the nature of app stores. But it's also tough because if you're a developer and you have to live in the app store, which you do if you want to have an iOS app, you have to accept sometimes draconian or ira you know seemingly irrational rules. And you just you don't have a choice. You you have someone to famously called it animal husbandry. Is the closest analogy. <laughs> analog to they they do what's in the best interest of they like the Apple and then users and then developers. You yeah. sort of they yeah. And if they feel it's a better experience in the app store to do this, then it inconveniences developers yeah. and it's not a contest. Yeah. It can also be difficult because sometimes people are using services and hardware that the the app hasn't been updated in a few years, but it still works and still allows you to use this piece of hardware, like right. it's a, a piece of educational hardware or a piece of medical hardware, but there hasn't been enough money in it for uh, the developer to update it for everything. And remember that it's not just a case of importing your old code at Xcode clicking a couple buttons and then burning a new copy of it to make it compatible with uh, iOS 9, iOS 10, and iOS 11. Oftentimes it's, hey, if you're going uh, to have an app in our app store, you have to support these APIs. If you're going to do data access, you're going to have to support this data API. And it becomes such a nightmare that you have to really want to update this app in order to do it. So it's, we're not going to, it's, I don't think it's going to be a disaster, but before we say that, before anybody thinks that, oh well, geez, what, a, oh, oh, poor, poor, poor you, you don't get to use your, uh, you don't get to use your uh, 2007, 2008, you know, Donkey Kong ripoff anymore. <laughs> Sometimes, for some people, it affects people more than that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, it's it's just the way thing. I kind of sometimes I wish for the old days of computing where you you know you go to a developers site or you'd go to a store and you'd buy a shrink wrap copy and you could put anything on your computer you wanted but i also understand the benefits that we have reaped because of closed app stores strict well, regulation huge, like you can't win because they i still have friends who have to use old versions of internet explorer to access right. websites that were written in activex yeah and it, it microsoft's biggest pro in, in some ways itunes is apple's version of this but you know windows xp just people just Ugh. governments and agencies not moving off the old technology stack even when they don't support the operating system anymore the guy called me on the radio show said i uh, i need to reinstall windows vista on my machine can you help it <laughs> what i really want to say is no, I'm not going to help you do that. Stop. There's so much technical <laughs> debt for a lot of companies and a lot of apps and yeah. a lot of industries. And yeah. governments are some of the worst offenders at this. Yeah. No, in fact, what I said, I helped them because I understand. There's lots of yeah. good reasons why you might have to be running Windows Vista. I can't think of them, but I'm sure... <laughs> Well, I, for a long time, it was Internet Explorer 6 or something, and people just right. couldn't move off it right. because their their internal applications were all built exactly. against Windows. They need ActiveX, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a break. Our picks of the week coming up. Our show today brought to you by those great folks at Dollar Shave Club. I've been, everybody knows Dollar Shave Club sells amazing razors for just a few bucks. I've been a member for a while. Love my shave. Actually, I, before I did any of these, I joined Dollar Shave Club and I have uh, been, a, I think, a member for a couple of three years. Dollar Shave Club, though, knows there's a few of you who haven't tried it yet. In fact, They've got a new trial kit that I think is just for you. Dollar Shave Club doesn't just sell razors and blades. They've got basically your bathroom covered, body wash, shampoo, hair gel, lip balm, everything. And now for $5, you can get a starter kit that gives you the executive razor and uh, a blade or two. How many blades do you get? A full cassette. Oh, well, that's nice. You get the four blades. That's great. You get the so this is this is what I get in the mail every month anyway. This is great. So the executive razor, nicely weighted, nice feel good grip, the four blades, 
you know, the, the cartridges with the, uh, with the five blades in them, the extra trimmer blade, the lubricated strip, nice, good stuff. But you also get, look what you also you get, and this is only $5, you get a sample size of their um, body cleanser, Amber and Lavender. I love how this, actually, I have the big, you know, the, the home, the trial version at home. But, mmm, I love that. Actually, this is sage and black pepper. That's another one. The Dr. Carver's shave butter, the best, closest, smoothest shave. And also, because it's got aloe and other good stuff in it, it's after you shave, your skin feels great all day long. And... And please, don't turn up your nose at this. Uh, a sample pack of One Wipe Charlies. The, this every bathroom should have some One Wipe Charlies. You get three trial size versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean, if you understand what I'm talking about. Shave butter, body wash, the butt wipes. After the first box, you can get replacement cartridges every month for a few bucks. And this is all just $5. I love it. DollarShaveClub.com slash Mac break. I know you have plenty of options in the store, but why go to the store when you can get great stuff shipped to you? Smells great, works great. High quality shave and grooming products delivered right to your door. Super high quality. And you'll become a fan as I have. DollarShaveClub.com slash Mac break. I love this sage and pepper shampoo. It's, it's very manly. Hmm. Although Lisa keeps stealing it. So maybe maybe it's womanly as well. It really smells good. DollarShaveClub.com slash MacBreak. Renee Ritchie, let's kick it off with you. Your pick of the week, my friend. So this Friday was Force Friday, which is a really fancy way of saying uh, Lucasfilm and Disney and Star Wars are going to show you everything that they want you to buy for the new holiday I season. I was wondering. Right it front. wasn't like May the 4th <laughs> or anything like that. It was No, a, I think it, this started with the, with the, uh, the Force Awakens was their first one, uh, and now they're doubling down for the, for the sequel. And, and it's effective. I mean, there, you can get an $800 Lego uh, Millennium Falcon. That, not that I've been thinking about you? buying that over did and over you? again. No. Did you? No, I just I have nowhere to put it, Leo. I have nowhere to put How it. How big Please is it for 800 bucks? Don't tempt me, Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> How big is it? Uh, it's, it's it's big. It's huge, but it looks it's, gorgeous. It's, it's about that big. It's it's bigger. Yes, it's the it's biggest big. Lego set I think ever I, made. It's bigger than the legendary uh, Millennium Falcon that came out like five, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I've been I've, I've been trying to get friends of mine to buy it for the past week because I don't I don't <sighs> I don't want to buy it. I don't want to assemble it. I don't want to own it. I just want to visit somebody's house. Seven thousand five hundred forty one. Yeah, good looking pieces. The yep. assembly manual is an inch and something thick. <sighs> it, yeah, no, but it looks spectacular. But uh, th there is something that's near and dear to the subject matter of this show that was made available. And a couple of years ago, we got the BB-8, the Sphero BB-8, because yeah. Sphero technology was used in creating BB-8 for the movie. So this year we're getting uh, BB-9E, which is a mysterious new droid from the new movie that we don't know much about, but also Sphero R2-D2, which I think a lot Ooh. of people a.k.a. Serenity Caldwell, have been looking forward to. Mm. And their behaviors are, like, they're all robots. They're all controllable. You can use them in Sphero. Apple also announced that you can use Swift Playgrounds uh, to, to program for them. They have some lessons that you can do with Swift Playgrounds. So these are really cool. They are, uh, you know, at the superficial level, just remote control robots that you can have, you know, the R2-D2 of your dreams rolling around. But you can also use the app to control them better. You can use Swift Playgrounds to create little programs that control them. You can also watch the movies with them, and they sort of react to the movies while you're watching them. And it's just everyone who's watched those movies always wanted a droid. They wanted an R2. They wanted the new ones. They wanted a BB-8. And I think it's really fantastic that Sphero is making these not only available, but available as toys, as sort of sophisticated electronic devices and as educational tools. And they're all available starting, I think um, Amazon had them as of last weekend. Uh, so if you want them for Christmas, I would act sooner rather than later because it's probably going to be a hot ticket item. Uh, but I, I'm just, I'm delighted that I live in a world where these things exist. Here's a, a, the R2-D2 Sphero playing a tag. You can see it's yep. not huge, but it no, no. looks really fun. And <laughs> scary. R2D2, where are you? Uh, oh, it would be fun to have all three, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So, uh, did you get them? Uh, no, I, 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 I may or may not have ordered one as a gift for somebody mm -hmm. else. I personally do not have them, mm -hmm. but. Th 
they they are in an Amazon box heading towards addresses oh. undisclosed. Well, you'll get to play yeah. with it, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> Uh, pretty cool. They are, so it is a little deceptive when you look at the pictures. So make sure you understand the size. They're only a f what six inches tall or something. But you don't want a full scale art. I mean, you want a full scale art. <laughs> well, you, you might, don't but... really want a full scale. <laughs> you don't really. You don't really. Uh, looks really fun. Uh, and so, how is the BB nine E different from BB eight? Is uh, like uh, Russell Holly, my colleague. He took a look at them and he thought it was going to be just a carbon copy, like you just the, like a, a different shell version. and the same movements. Yeah. But they had moves around differently, and the robots okay. got like a different. Like they did a good job of sort of letting the character be different, yeah. which I think is really cool. <laughs> By the way, your article, or is it yours or Serenity? It's Russell's. Russell's article in yeah. the. Oh, Russell Holly works for you now. He's for a long time. He's he's been working on Android Central. And he runs our VR head oh, site. Oh, because so he VR works for content. Android Central, of course. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot. Yeah. He's, he's looking good. He lost some weight. He looks he, really, yeah. really, really He's good. awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. Russell. Uh, and so smart. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is what happens when Lyra Erso dies in Rogue One. Mm. <laughs> 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 he's having some fun with it. And there's yeah. that's a better picture for the, the rough size. It fits in the child's palm of a child's hand. So it's like a BB-8 body with an R5-D4 head in jet black or, or sort of mm. you know, well-worn jet black, mm. micro-abrased jet black. Mm. And while the Lego isn't available till October 1st, you can get your BB-8s for $100 uh, yeah. at uh, Amazon and other They're not cheap, but they're delightful. Places. Yeah. I bought the original BB-8. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. So much fun. Yeah. Andy Anako, pick of the week, my friend. Uh, mine is a Chrome browser extension plugin that I've been praying for for years. Uh, you, you, you get into that situation where you've got, you're doing research or you're just screwing around and you've got so many browser tabs open that first you don't see the names of the tabs, you only see the icons, and then you just get this jagged sort of sawtooth thing because you've got so many tabs open <sighs> or, or, or it's something like that. One tab is a browser extension. You click on this and it will take every single tab inside that window and close them all and put all the URLs into just a simple web page that it generates with just uh, all the links. So essentially, instead of getting having 18 tabs uh, inside this window, you now have one tab that has a list of links along with a couple of tools so that you can click a button and just restore all of them by just simply opening those URLs or save them or share them as a web page to someplace else. Because there's, again, so many times where I'm preparing for, I'm going to be on uh, public radio again on Friday, so I'm just doing research and pitching stories. And so I've got this one window that I can't get rid of it because that's sort of the state of my mind as I'm planning these 30 minutes in my head. But it's not worth my creating bookmarks for each and every one of these because they're just what I'm looking at and thinking about. But just click on that one button inside the, inside the tool and boom, I've got all those 11, 12 to 15, whatever uh, links just there in one page. Uh, and if I want to put it right back, I can put it right back. So there are a couple of advantages. Number one, uh, just getting rid of clutter, but also remember that when a web page is open, it's running all kinds of JavaScript in the background and it's hammering the CPU. So it's certainly going to reduce uh, memory load. It will probably extend the life of your battery a little bit if you're essentially slumbering all of these tabs into a link. Uh, the, only, the only disadvantage is that remember that uh, it, all it's doing is it's saving whatever URL is in the address bar. So if you're in the middle of something, mm. it's not it's not as though like if you're if you're reading like a seventeen thousand word uh, paper or something, it's not going to leave you back at the place where you were scrolled before. It'll just simply reopen that URL. Uh, so it's but still for everything it does. Uh, it's really wonderful. And if you go to the web page, of course, the, they are wise enough to ask to ask the question, how do you make money? Uh, and they and they explain that, no, we are just desperately needed this for ourselves. So we wrote it. So it's just free. And it's hard to charge it. for Chrome extensions anyway. It's not. a. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was probably very wise. But uh, yeah. that was that, that was I was also fortunately I have Ghostry and all these other uh, browser extensions that looks for. I was, I was wondering, OK, is there going to be some sort of affiliate advertising talk back to all of this? And Nope, it doesn't fire up anything. Uh, actually, hang on. Ah, no. Okay, there's a one tracker, a Google Analytics, but that's it. Oh, that's nothing. Google Analytics might, just means they they want to know how many people use it. Right. So it's, it's, it's a, it is a that. Chrome extension. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that is really a, a great idea. I just installed it. I don't. I'm not one of those people. Obviously, you are who uses a lot of tabs. I I believe in tab hygiene. I close tabs. 
Yeah. I'll, maybe too, uh, uh, too Merlin, Does Merlin have a tab zero? <laughs> Do you, okay. yeah. you have tab zero. Browser with, tab zero. Yeah, I like this with one tab. Good idea for a uh, Chrome extension. Firefox too, you said. It also works with Firefox, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Uh, we have a great studio audience today uh, from all over Petaluma and San Francisco and Boston and Vermont and Maine. But a couple uh, visiting us from Honolulu today. Uh, Victor is a developer and he has a brand new app. And I thought I'd give him a little plug because it's a great idea for an app called M Foodie. I don't know about you, but I love farmers markets. Would you like to know what farmers markets are near you as you travel around M Foodie? does that you can discover farmers markets apparently i didn't know this usda has a database so this taps into that so it's up to date uh all over the u.s and its territories and then also uh, has a tab for vendors and uh and so you can vendors can talk i didn't realize this there are 8600 farmers markets in the u.s you can find markets by day location name hours of operation Search near monuments, so you can say, "Where's the best farmers market near the Space Needle?" Etc. 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 And uh, he's going to uh, make it possible for people who represent markets or vendors to get a free web page with uh, M Foodie information in an easy-to-read fact sheet style, which is, I think, a really uh, nice idea. Obviously, he's a fan of the farmers markets. Uh, M Foodie, it's free, right? You no charge. Thank you, Victor, for. Uh, making that possible. I think it's a great idea. You might want to download it on the App Store and put it on your on your phone or your tablet. It's a it's an iPhone app. mfoodie.com. Thank you everybody for a great show the last week, the last MacBreak weekly of the iPhone 7 era. Mm. It is all Hopefully about the, to change. Hopefully Savage. the last the uh, last week of 3 months where we have to say there's really nothing to talk about today. Everybody's <laughs> Actually, AR Kit's going to give us a lot to talk about over yes. the next months. Uh, thank goodness. And I have a feeling there'll be a few other things uh, involved. We didn't even mention there'll be a new Apple Series 3 Apple Watch as well. Yeah. Uh, but we'll find out all about it. Our live broadcast, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 1700 UTC. Basically, in this time slot, we'll, uh, we'll move iOS today to Wednesday for obvious reasons. We don't really want to do a show before the Apple event. So we'll be doing that Wednesday morning. Uh, Megan and I and Alex Lindsay will come in a little bit early. We'll do the uh, live event. If you want to watch the live stream, Apple has its own live stream that you can watch. Of course, you have to have an Apple device usually to watch that in Safari. Or Edge, I think, does it too. Oh, Edge can do it? I believe so. So if you have Windows, you can watch it on Edge. Well, we'll see. Uh, but uh, you can always watch our stream on any, on any device. Uh, but you, the only negative in that is you'll hear our snarky comments behind the scenes. Positive. <laughs> Positive. No, we, you know what? We try to give you context and understanding, and, and, and we also will exclaim oohs and ahs if there's something to ooh and ah about. Uh, we, we, have, we, we have the understanding that if you wanted to watch this without any commentary whatsoever, there is an actual there Apple feed that you can be watching. There is a way to that, do it. That you have opted in by watching this our live stream to having <laughs> us say things. So. I, it is kind of ironic because uh, people will always tune in saying, why are they talking? I want to watch. Well, you can. You just... This is this is the channel where we talk, uh, and I hope you will join us because it's always a lot of fun. It's always an event when Apple has something to announce, and we'll we'll look for you in the crowd, Renee, somewhere there with Serenity and a yes, bunch sir. of other people from iMore.com. We do Mac Break Weekly normally, except for next week. We do it normally at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's 1800 UTC. We'll probably start around noon next week to make way for the Apple event. You can tune in live, watch us, or anything we do live at twit.tv slash live. I should point out, if you have an Amazon Echo, you can listen live uh, by simply saying Echo, listen to Twit live on TuneIn. Uh, if you have an Echo show, one with a screen, you could say watch Twit live on uh, YouTube. We're on YouTube live. You can also listen to the most recent episode of any podcast, such as Echo Listen to Mac Break Weekly on TuneIn, and you'll hear the most recent version of the podcast that way. So there's plenty of ways to listen to us. Get your favorite podcast app, subscribe. That way you won't miss an episode. Now, my friends, for those of you not watching live, it's time to get back to work. Break time is over. Break time is over.